All right, stream is on. Hello, friends, and welcome to a D&D game. Uh, Forgotten Ones is not happening this week, which is another thing I do, uh, and some of these players also do. And uh, Spud normally streams those. I'm not him. I'm not good at streaming. We've established this. We're playing a 5e one-shot I'm calling Children of Man uh, for reasons that will become obvious shortly. Uh, joining me this week are my four lovely players. We have Avis Echo. Hello. Azure Mountain. Hey. Winged Cat. Yo. And Zenkarn. Hello. Uh, so the basic premise of this one shot is that uh, uh, these four players are all playing half something or other. We have a uh, Asimar, a Tiefling, a Goliath, or a half giant using the Goliath spreadsheet, or Goliath, um, can't think of the word, uh, <laughs> background stuff, and a Dragonborn. And they all have the same dad. <laughs> Oh. That uh, they are not, cur they, they don't quite know exactly who it actually is. So the goal of this particular game is to uh, find dad and resolve that situation. However that might go. Um, everybody has uh, different motivations, but um, let's start off with the uh, meetup. Now, my question to you players is, do you want to have met up before this, or do you want this to be your first interaction? I'm fine with whatever. <laughs> I think for Fro, she may have heard of one or one of the PCs and came here to meet them looking for clues. All right. I want to walk in with Nebula because it'd be funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nebula would have probably have found at least one of them, considering she's fairly well traveled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also you find the monk. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. So you are here's here's what I'm gonna say. Uh, the four of you will be uh, approaching the city of Jabast. Um, I know it looks like Waterdeep. It's not. It just happens to be modeled after Waterdeep <laughs> because I didn't have time to make a brand new map. So I'm going with a different one. Uh, specifically, you are meeting at the gates of the city Dravast. Uh, and the gates are closed. Um, approaching first, due to the fact that they are uh, in easily the most uh, uh, speedy of vehicles, are Nebula and Nim. And how do you de describe yourselves approaching these closed gates that are currently just backed up with people? Niv is that one person who's literally almost pushing over the person um, drawing the carriage and looking at everything because everything is wonderful. Because it's, hey, I mean, it's not a... It's not a monk cemetery. Uh, it's not a monk place. <laughs> a temple? Not a monk cemetery. <laughs> it's not a monk temple at the top of a mountain. <laughs> Shut up, I can words. It's so you want to drive? No, I want to look at everything. <laughs> you can do that while driving. Saves me having to drive. But then I have to pay attention to the horses. I want to pay attention. No, to it's everything. a Pegasus. It'll do most of the work for you. You just got to sit up front. Every now and again, tell it a carrot is coming. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll probably be in the uh, in the carriage, um, lounging, reading some, reading some probably sheet music or one of my books, uh, and sort of poke my head out the window and be like, "Oi, oi, darling, what's going on?" Uh, there's a lot of people. I'll tell them to move. We're busy. But there's a lot of them. They might be busy then too. Say it many times. But <laughs> no, uh. but Stalin, go, go. <laughs> um, and while this is happening, uh, Quarry and Frost, you are both approaching the same sort of uh gateway. 
from different directions. Um, Corey, you are uh, uh, e- pretty easily climbing up the sort of cliff face to the north. And uh, yep. Frost, you are uh, approaching the same area from the south along the same roadway. But you are not blocked as the, you are not quite as blocked as the carriages are. Yeah, I'm on foot. I'm just shifting through the crowds. Um, trying, to look, trying to look as nonchalant as a six-foot-tall dragonborn can. Uh, surprising. Uh, oh, roll, roll me a d20 for chalantness. So yeah, that, that, that reads as far as how nonchalant a dragonborn can be. Yeah, five is, yeah. <laughs> um, the l- Let me just do a quick... How does the crowd react to Dragonborn? Yeah, the city is big enough that they're used to um, Dragonborns. Or at least the people who are traveling into the city are used to Dragonborns. Um, uh, As I said, the gates to the city seem to be completely closed, and there are uh, a a series of guards in front of the gates who are um, uh, from... From the perspective of whomever might be closest, can see are getting turned away. Um, and uh, the, these these people arguing with the guards are getting uh, rowdier, and the guards are getting more pissed off at the fact that these people are not seeming to understand the situation. Nim and Nebula are on a uh, carriage, or what? Yes, they're on a carriage. I'm going to say their carriage is right about here. They're behind, like, six others. Okay. Um, Frost's destination is not the gate. Frost's destination is Nim and Nebula. Okay. Any particular reason? Nebula, someone's coming! Of course they are. Yeah, Frost is being very odd. Online for the carriage now that she recognizes her Corey. Okay. Hmm. Uh, Corey. Nebula. Corey, what are wh- what? how are you reacting to the situation? Oh, uh, yeah. I walk up to the gate, and I'm assuming people are moving out of my way, seeing as I'm seven and a half feet tall. Yeah. And very yeah. muscular. <laughs> You, so uh, it it's it's like parting uh, a a field of wheat. <laughs> yeah, pretty dang easy. So I just go up to the guards and ask what's going on. Uh, Why are the gates closed? One of the guards sighs, and the other one sort of rolls his eyes and looks at you and goes, "City's off limits for the meanwhile. We've got a bit of a celebration going on, and the uh, main streets are blocked. But people don't seem to understand that." I see. And uh, the uh, other guard sort of like rubs his head and goes, we have pushed off so many carts. They just aren't listening to us. Well, I can probably just head north and go in from a different direction. Uh, You probably could. It Um, might take a while, but... It might take a while, though. Uh... That said, uh, we'll we'll cut back to you in just a moment. Um, Frost, uh, Nim, Nebula, how's it going on? Gosh. <laughs> Depends. When you say you're approaching the carriage, because I'm assuming it's probably an enclosed one, knowing Nebula. Um, are you, like, knocking on the door or what? Um, so Nebula's on top of uh, driving whatever herd anim- animals you got pulling it, right? No, I'm inside. <laughs> Nim's doing the carriage drawing. Ah, well, can I help you? Nim just supervising. Frost walks up next, just Nebula! Nebula! I'll just Neb, stand off he knows boy. you! Or they know you! I'm going to poke my head out the window. <sighs> Look, I'm not doing autographs at the moment. Once I'm inside and settled, darling, I'll get you something. Until then, be on your way. Can you get me our dad? I'm very sorry. What was that? 
Can you get me the person who sired you and me? <gasps> Are up, you um... also our sister brother? That is what I hear. They can come in the carriage, right? Yes, yes, they can sit up next to you. We'll sort it out. Come on, up here. I'm it's sorry. more comfortable. You can see more stuff. And Frost takes the invitation and hops on up. So real quick, what's the name of the dad? I assume we at least have a name. Uh, the name you have is uh, Feodor. F-E-O-D-O-R. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll type it in the chat so you guys have it. Um, okay. But you do not have a last name. So, well, I've got a clan name. You do have a clan name, but the it, it's it might different, not different. Uh, yeah, different cultures. Different cultures. Um, what I mean is, you, yeah, you don't have the last name of the dad. <laughs> yeah. Um. That said, uh, uh, one thing that I I uh should mention is that um the uh um. Sorry, brain shorting out for a moment. It's been a long day. <laughs> I feel uh, that. <laughs> you uh, uh, you, you do, as demonstrated by Frost, Nebula, and Nim's just, this interaction is, you do sort of know each other just in in regards to uh, one of your other siblings, uh, a, a Ganassi who happens to live in Jabass, uh, has, has made significant efforts to, shall we say, uh, get you all together. So you've been pen pals with each other for uh, a good two or three months at this point. Hmm. Um, so, Kor, you would you would know of them even if you don't necessarily recognize them by sight. Right. Um, and likewise for Nim, Nebula, and Frost, you would probably recognize Kyo- uh, Kuori if, uh, even if you didn't know him exactly by sight. How to find the group. I mean, listen for the amount of times that Nim yells Nebula. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's probably going to be uh, easier for you guys to find me, seeing as I'm um, pretty conspicuous. Well, if you stay at the front of the gate, we're heading that way anyway, so we'll, we'll, we'll hit each other. All right. The issue is, I might just climb the cliff face up near to the Beacon March. Because that's the way into the city that's not walled off. Do we see basically half giant anywhere? Uh, roll perception, I guess. <laughs> oh wait, hold on. Uh, yeah, I guess specifically Frost and Nim roll perception because Nebula, you're in your carriage. Nebula, <laughs> don't care. Around, I'm being comfy. <laughs> Everyone you, else can exert themselves. You've got wine to drink and books to read. Wine. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, it's it's fairly easy to catch the uh, uh, half giant standing in front of the gates. Um, yeah, having... I'm like at least a foot and a half taller than everyone else here. Oh, easily. So Nim stands up. <laughs> yeah, kind of hard to miss where she's standing, and is like waving her hands up in the air. It's like, hey, are you Corey? But much louder because I'm not gonna scream in everyone's <laughs> ear. I turn and approach them. Hi! I'm I am Corey Herbfinder on a Kalathai. I am, well, if we're going to do the long way, I'm Nimpadora Masuda. Nim, for short. I see. Nebula's inside. Break my head out. Corey, nice to meet you. And then get back to drinking wine. <laughs> All right. And I'm Bella from Seated, and I'm Frost. Okay, we are now all acquainted. Hooray! Meeting done. Uh, the the first sort of cart next to the gate finally turns around and tries uh, uncomfortably for everyone to go back down the road. Uh, and the next the next cart sort of rolls bo- rolls up to the gate, and they also decide to argue with the guards about delivering whatever it is they're trying to do. So, how are you going to get yourselves all in? 
Do I know a teleportation circle uh, glyph was in the city? Um, yes, Drabast has a pretty uh, a pretty remarkable teleportation circle, uh, like dead center in the middle of their market, um, because they uh, they like to show off. Uh, however, um, you have tried this. Uh, you tried this yesterday because that would have been much easier than walking, uh, and something seems to be uh, like it seems to be a sort of one way close off right now. Um, seems like someone has, I guess, turned off the teleportation circle on one side, if that makes sense. Magic field. Right. Yeah. I'm revealing this to the party. Says, yeah. I tried teleporting in and they've seriously got this place locked down. Nebula. How are we going to get in? Everything. How big is Corey? Seven and a half feet tall. Excellent. How many people in front of us in the gate? Uh, there are six more carts in front of you in the gate. How um, tall is the wall? It's a good feel... 15 feet tall, at least. I have mm. such a bad feeling right now. I bet I <laughs> could climb you the wall. Are... You probably could. Are you up on... You're right, going can you bring her with you? I mean, if I'm going to climb anything, I'm going to climb the cliff face to where there's not a wall. Because, you know... We don't need to climb, trust me. Um, Nebula will poke her head out of the carriage and be like, Corey, you were talking to the guards earlier. Did they say anything? Celebration. All the roads are closed, or filled with people. Oh, that's easy, then. Um, I'm going to cast a spell, oh. if I can. Major image. I this see. This may not work the way I'm thinking. Um, so you create the image of an object, a creature, or some other visible phenomenon that is no longer than a 20-foot cube. The image appears at a spot that you can see within range and lasts for the duration. It seems completely real, including sound, smells, and temperature appropriate to the thing depicted. I'm just, but it's a long description. I'll just... Mm -hmm. um, so what I want to do is lean out the window, look up at the space above my carriage, cast major image as a picture of Nebula playing the uh, playing her instrument mm -hmm. with music going. Okay. All right. Uh, and, and what... I, I'm, I'm a bit confused. What is your intended goal with this? Um, to be in, as eye-catching as possible... And then I'm going to just start driving forward, getting the other bot to yell, get out of the way, the entertainment is here. <laughs> okay. Um... Frost sees this, breaks out her flute, and tries to help. I just walk alongside the carriage. The half giant's, the half -giant's <laughs> following the plan perfectly. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Um, I will want a quick performance check from you, if that's okay, cute list. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, give me one... Nim has no idea what's going on. <laughs> mm. pretty 26. Good. Pretty good. Pretty plus 13, you monster! <laughs> Nebula has a lot of double proficiencies. I know! Um, so, uh, here is what I am going to... Uh, okay, so I need to make two rolls, actually. One moment. Alright. <laughs> uh, so, uh, upon hearing that, the guards, uh, like, look at each other, uh, and, you know, all of the carts are moving out of the way for, re like, as fast as they can because this is, uh, crazy. Um, and the guards... Have a moment, look at each other, and, uh, uh, you know, wh whomever is nearby can see them sort of mumbling to each other. Uh, and then they make, like, a very frantic gesture to the guard on top of the gate, uh, who makes a frantic gesture to the guards inside the gate. Uh, and it slow, the doors slowly start to swing open. Um, and, uh, uh, Nim... Do me a favor. Uh, you said you were uh, basically driving, right? 
I I was waiting for this. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and roll me. <sighs> Animal handling? <laughs> yeah, go ahead and roll me some animal handling. I think that's the closest I can get to a driving roll. Okay. Uh, it is a very bumpy ride. Um, and you... If I see her having trouble, I can help out as well. There's oh. a lot of, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm yeah. sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> go, go ahead and... Uh, uh... <laughs> oh, yeah. So. Okay. So, uh, yes, uh, uh, Nim, you're not the best at driving this Pegasus for a multitude of reasons. Uh, Corey, you <laughs> I've are- I've never even seen it! Pretty much. Before. Corey, you are, um, uh, you, you can tell that, uh, this is going to go very poorly if you don't sort of step in. And you, uh, basically lightly jogging next to this, uh, reach out, grab one of the reins, and pull it back just slightly enough- that uh, the speed slows so you don't collide headfirst into the very, like, the very thin gap that this gate is creating for you guys. Um, yeah. And uh, 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 as this is all happening, all of the people who have sort of surrounded the gate trying to get in are also trying to get in, um, seemingly not caring too much about the cart that's sort of trying to, like, careen down River Street. Um... And uh, uh, as you sort of make your way, uh, as the four of you make your way into this gate, uh, you can hear uh, an inordinate amount of music and uh, people cheering, and you can smell uh, all sorts of food being cooked and uh, sweets being made. Uh, this this place is a an enormous party. But this particular area seems to have been cordoned off a little bit. Um, the uh, as you uh, as you cut down River Street and enter the high road, um, you can see that uh, the uh, there while there are a bunch of people sort of crowding the sidewalks, the roads themselves have been sort of uh, uh, cordoned off from everything else. Um, so uh, yes, which way do you want to go? Let me pull up the other, the next part of the maps so that you guys have choices. Uh, Holy crap, that's a big map. Ma why, why are maps so big? There's the southeast and the northeast. Do we know where we're supposed to go? Uh, no. You've been, you've just been told by uh, your uh, Genasi sibling, or Genasi sibling, uh, that uh, they believe that your father is somewhere in this city. Um, they're they're like there's a they're basically they are tracking down a few different leads, um, and the 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 best. If you want to find them, uh, they, they've told you that they are staying at, uh, let me, sorry, there are so many maps that I need to sort of deal with. Um, I should probably just get the big map for me. Uh, dang it! Um, yeah, I'm just gonna pull up for myself the very big map. Uh, water deep. Okay. Um. Oh god, I can't. I can't read anything on this map. Dang it. I apologize, friends. Um. So the uh, your your Ganassi friend is in the sort of northern half of the town, uh, of Drabast. Uh, in a uh, uh sort of like to the north east of the market district. Does our sibling have a name? Uh, your sibling's name is... One moment. I have it written down on my notes. Uh... It is... Oh, come on. Where is it? Scoria. 
They are uh, uh, <laughs> they are a f- half fire <laughs> Ganassi. Yeah. Yeah. Seems about Checks right. Out. Yep. <laughs> Descended from a fire elemental because. Uh, oh. <laughs> because Should we find Scoria? Let's. Yes. Yes, we probably should. So, do we just know where that is? Um, you have a you have like a vague idea of where it is, uh, because the it she hasn't ever given you sort of specifics on it. She's just told you like, yeah, I live uh, in this part of town. Um, I'm basically the only Ganassi here, so you know everyone looks at me weirdly. Um, so should I roll survival or investigation? This, yeah, this feels investigationy. All right. Seems like a pretty good number. Um, yes, with a twenty-three, uh, you uh, as you sort of lead the uh, as the the group of you lead the carriage towards the north, um, you uh, find uh, some people chatting. Uh, you hear you know whispers about oh that Ganassi has been wandering around again asking questions. Uh, can't you just enjoy the celebration? Um, and you find that uh, uh, she has sort of made her way over to uh, Pony Way, which is uh, it's um, it's the cross between Horn Street and Immer Street. Apparently, she is uh, uh, if not going home, she's at least going to meet someone over there. All right. Yes. Sorry, I should have put a pointer down. Let me do that. Boo! Big old green one right here. All right. So, uh, as you are making your way towards Ponyway, however, the streets are beginning to get more crowded, and people are starting to look at you for uh, at least a little suspiciously, because it's kind of weird <laughs> to see uh, th- this group of travelers. Um, especially when the roads have seemed to have pretty explicitly been closed. I think we should drop the carriage off somewhere, Nebula. Yeah, uh, she'll probably right. We'll need to get it stabled. Uh, nowhere cheap, mind you. <laughs> Did you say nowhere cheap? Nowhere cheap. Okay. Uh... <laughs> You, uh, uh, 14. <laughs> All right. Uh, fortunately, um, uh, you, you, the, uh, uh, <laughs> as you are sort of traveling up towards Pony Street, um, and looking for a place to sort of check the carriage, uh, Nim, you, you are just wary enough to understand that, uh, the person claiming that, he uh, he can take care of the carriage on the street of the Manticore. He's probably trying to swindle you because he doesn't look like he owns a stable. Yeah, no, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, and um, you do end up, uh, you are able to find a, uh, a stable in the uh, uh, shortly, or fairly close to it in the, uh, the big star labeled the Sword Maiden. That is a... Uh, a very nice sort of uh, stable slash tavern in this part of town. All right. And yes, so the four of you still getting some looks because you're kind of a weird group. Let's be honest. Um, all, this, the city seems to be majority human. Um, there are definitely some uh, some of the other races, but uh, it's 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 fairly rare by comparison. Um, and yes, you make your way over to Pony Way, and you find yourself with, uh, you, you find yourself, uh, running into a Genasi, Le- or Genasi, I keep doing that. <laughs> I want, uh, it, it should be Genasi, because they're, it's like Jin, but I keep forgetting. You're Let- right, I, I agree. I 100% agree with you. Let me see if I can find at least a token for her. And that isn't because they're generic. It's not because they're generic. Um, I might have picked a bit of a generic one with, with Scoria, but 
Uh, I had a lot of things to do, so... <laughs> Um, I can't find a token right now, unfortunately. But yes, she's uh, she's about five foot six, uh, bright red skin. She almost looks like a tiefling, but uh, there are some, you know, there aren't horns or wings or anything like that. Um, and she's uh, even though like everyone else in the area is dressed sort of conservatively, it's not uh, it's it's not hot, it's not cold. Uh, she she is uh, dressed. She, she, she is wearing shorter clothing than basically everybody else because she looks miserably hot. <laughs> um, and, uh, uh, yes, she, upon seeing the four of you, uh, waves a hand and goes, Oh, good, all four of you finally made it! <coughs> How are y'all doing, then? Doing great! <sighs> yeah. I'm fine. Well, thank you. Existing. Well, that's um, that's all certainly something. Um, uh, it's I'm sorry for uh, I didn't think you'd I didn't think this was all going to happen. She sort of gestures to like the people crowding the streets and like the the sounds and smells in the distance. Um, and she sort of gives you all a look and goes, apparently the king is having his fifth child. Uh, and it's. A cause for celebration. Um, and she, she looks at the five, you know, she looks around at the five of us and goes, It's making me wonder. You know, just, it, it might be a little bit. After all, uh, King, King Feodor is uh, quite apt at this whole child-rearing business. Hmm. Five, four... <laughs> Three, two, one. Wait, is that dad? Uh, Scoria kind of shrugs and goes, It's a possibility. Um, the king had an entourage that sort of went out into the world some time ago, but he's not the only Feodor here, and he's not, oh. <laughs> he's not the only Feodor who has more children than I can count. Yes, but how many of them could have, you know, sired someone like me? I would believe it would be him. Boy, I really want to make a crack at that, but that's very out of character. Do it anyway, because it'll be funny. So you can only count to five, huh? It's not very high. <laughs> Scoria takes a moment and hits her face. Uh, I, I, I know it's not in character. I'm assuming that's yeah. enough in character for one of you to have said it. <laughs> Probably uh, Nebula. Probably <laughs> Nebula. Scoria probably hits her not. face and goes, nice. <laughs> Scoria hits her face and goes, oh, it's been, I haven't slept a lot lately. I'm very tired and it's very hot here. Um, she, she sort Is of, it hot? She, she sort of gestures to herself and goes, you'd think someone born of a fire elemental would be uh, uh, used to heat, but it's just, it bothers the crap out of me. Um, and no, it's, it's actually not very hot for any of you. <laughs> uh, like I said, it's, in that one in the bud. it's, it's sort of very temperate. It's just that for, for whatever reason, Scoria just looks miserably warm. Um, uh, and she goes, okay, um, I guess before we, um, uh, go on our search, uh, did you all need anything? Uh, I know a shop that sells some magical items. You must be at least tired from your travels. Do you want some food? Sure! Um, anyone else beside from Nim? <laughs> I, I could eat. Sure, the, the road has been long and hungry. And if you, the heat bothers you, here, let me give you this blessing. Press a dedication on her clothes to chill them. Uh, Scoria looks remarkably pleased by all this, and, go, and uh, upon that happening, uh, puts her hands on on your shoulders and goes, uh, when this is all over, can I just, like, travel with you? Because I need this in my life. Let us see how the, this uh, resolves. But perhaps. Oh, very well. Um, 
and uh, Scoria sort of gives a gesture, and uh, yeah, you she leads you towards uh, the. Let me pull up the maps again. Uh, should just be the north, shouldn't it? No, no. Where is it? Northeast? No. So where are we headed? Uh, Scoria is going to take you all to the market and towards the sort of like central area of the celebration, um, which is not in this part of town. It's in the west. Yes, here we go. Sorry, trying to. I, it's so hard to remember all of the various parts of Waterdeep. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. So uh, she's taking you to sort of the 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 big central market area, um, and just leading you down all of these uh, uh, streets that are just lined with food carts and stalls and uh, games. It's it's a it's a big celebration, and it looks like it's only just sort of started. So, uh, yeah, how would you... D tell me what y'all, what your characters would do in this sort of bountiful marketplace. Because I'm an egotist, does anyone recognize me? Uh, let me make a roll. Nim is looking at everything. There is a lot of everything to take in. That's uh, fine. <laughs> Uh, Nebula, you are hearing, uh, uh, every now and again, you can hear some sort of, like, uh, uh, oh my god, is that Nebula? And just very, uh, like, high-pitched screaming, sort of, just in the middle of the crowds. Um, but no one has approached you as of yet. Dental, stride well, keep an eye on Nim and make sure she doesn't touch anything explosive. Stuff does that? Really? Honestly, truly? Yes, yeah, stuff can explode. Just ask before you touch anything that looks like it's glowing. So cool! Yes. Yes. Cool. There's something funny about that, because I'm, I'm just picturing, like, I'm pretty sure one of the other monk schools can make people explode. <laughs> <laughs> So it's just... It, you want to know what's funny? What? It's her at level 17. Yep. <laughs> Quivering palm. That's... Uh, yeah. <laughs> they didn't teach her that is checking out what, reason. <laughs> Frost, meanwhile, is checking out what, what's glowing and keeping her ear out for anything that's uh, troubling, any word of bandits that uh, she can conveniently raid. Hmm. And Quarry? So I'd like to use Know Your Enemy to figure to figure out if everyone else's armor class and hit points are equal to greater than or less than mine. Like everyone in the crowd? Or your teammates? Just in the party. Okay. Um, the skill is Know Your Enemy, but it helps to know your allies as well. All right. Uh, let's see here. Gotta check everybody's stuff. Are you wearing any obvious armor? I mean, I'm wearing no. chain. I'm pretty sure Feroz is going to have a higher AC despite not wearing armor. My AC is 18. It's, uh, Quarry is 18, Frost is 16, Nebula is 16, Nim is 18. Yeah. So, at least, as, unless I messed up something in the uh, nope, that's what I got. Yeah, because I I couldn't find any armor in your um in your yeah no oh, right, it's unarmored it's defense not in yours right because I also front. have a shield. Yeah, you do have a shield. That probably also yeah is the bonus. That's, that's the additional shield. plus two. Yep. Which I feel like there should be some shields that do more than plus two rather than just every shield being plus two. But well, there yeah. is shield plus one. <laughs> that's it. All right. That has never come up. Well, All right. Both. So you you know that you you and uh, Nim are probably the best at taking hits in the party, or at least the best at avoiding being hit. Uh, anything in particular you want to do with that knowledge, or is it just for nah. future reference? But I I did also want to know uh, the standings of HP. 
which by the way, it doesn't tell you the exact uh, numbers, just whether they have the same, less or more. Ah. Uh, everyone else has less than you. All right. Didn't that be a serious problem? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just somehow. Mine's probably pretty high. Somehow the half giant has the lowest HP. How did that happen? Yeah. Uh, no. I would have had more, but uh, I traded out one of my ability score improvements for a feat. Yeah. Or two of them anyway. Yeah, I saw. But only one of them would have affected my HP. Yeah. Any hoodle. Um, okay, so Quarry knows a bit more about the combat capabilities of his uh, allies. Uh, Frost, mm -hmm. roll an investigation for me. Or, hmm. no, not, or? A, not investigation. Uh, that might be a perception roll, because you're just sort of, like, listening to, like, what's going on in the crowd. Okay. That is a higher roll than I was expecting. Um, I guess I shouldn't be too surprised with that plus seven. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's really hard to get any sort of uh, good read on everything going on in the crowd. Um, cause there's again, just a lot happening. Um, but with a 26, you do actually hear, um, you, you can't identify where it's coming from, but you do catch wind of someone saying something about, uh, so the heist is tonight, right? Um, and that's all you sort of catch before, like, the rest of the crowd sort of, you know, covers that. But you definitely heard someone talking about a heist tonight. Hey, that's actually zero information in a city this big, this populated. There's going to be a heist any given night, almost. Or at any given week. Um, a heist is stealing the king's fifth child. <laughs> uh, could be. It's... you. I mean, it's. I think it's fair to say that based on everything that's happening, that the heist probably has something to do with the the king. Yeah, because this is a big celebration. Um, Nim, roll, uh, roll, roll, just a general perception for me. Uh. So, so you do find something that's glowing. <laughs> um, Does the rest of us see her reaction to something that's glowing? Uh, I'm going to restrain myself from picking it up immediately. I'm just going to stare at it. Um, the uh, <laughs> the uh, uh, dragonborn manning the food stall in front of you uh, sees your sort of restrained enthusiasm, uh, picks up the, uh, it, it looks like a, like a brightly glowing red apple, uh, and just sort of tosses it to you. <gasps> um, and you hear a, uh, it's on the house. Thank you so much, sir. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, it, it definitely, it just from grabbing it doesn't feel quite like a normal apple. It's, it's harder. It's got like a weird sort of shell around it. Um, it's, it smells sweeter than a regular apple. Uh, but also again, glowing bright red. It's not like it's been, it, it's been covered in something and that something is glowing. <laughs> I'm going to bite it. <laughs> is it just a candy apple? Um, Yes and no. <laughs> um, it's not stopping me from biting it. <laughs> uh, make a con roll for me. <laughs> All right. Uh, these, <laughs> it's 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 very sweet and very spicy. Um. To, to the point where, uh, uh, you, you know, it, it, it almost burns your tongue just from the first bite. Um, 
and uh, uh, you, <laughs> you know, it, it's it's it it almost hurts with how spicy it is, um, and it doesn't actually physically hurt you, but you can feel that this thing is at like it's whatever candy coating <laughs> is on this also makes it kind of magical, or at least it, there's there's some sort of magic in it. Uh, you get the hiccups, and a little jet of flame spits out of your mouth. Ah. <laughs> nebula, 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 nebula! Look! Yes. I can spit fire! Oh, wonderful. I am, I'm... You should try I'm it! I'm so it's, glad it's, for it's you. Really good. Um... You know what? No, I think I'll pass, darling. You finish it. It's fine. <laughs> Grory? Frost? What you got there? A glowing apple? It's an apple that makes you breathe fire! You should try it! Pass. Try it! Try it! I shall pass. <laughs> Aww. Suppose it's a... <laughs> suppose it might uh, <laughs> function a little differently with you, Frost. <laughs> That's what she's worried about, yes. Corey? I am fine as well. Aww. Uh Nebula, you uh y- you said you were trying to sort of step away from the party for a little bit. What is it that you wanted to do? Oh, um Thought I've drawn a complete blank now. I had it all set up in my head, now it's just going. I'm sorry, I took too long. Of- no, 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 no. Um, <laughs> it's just really early, and I'm tired. Um, no, I was going to sort of look around at the entertainment, see what's on play show-wise, like uh, buskers, singers, that kind of thing. There are a lot of buskers. Um, again, it's pretty early in the day. Uh, whatever main event is happening hasn't quite started yet. Um, yeah. But there are a bunch of, like, townspeople who are... Uh, uh, you know, singing songs and making music. Uh, there's a few people in bad clown costumes doing bad clowning. Um, there's a, uh, Anyone decent? sorry, what? Anyone decent? Um, no, <laughs> uh, the, 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 the one that came closest to like, Oh, that might actually be kind of impressive is there was uh, uh, someone who looked like they were doing a living statue thing. And then upon further, like upon further looking, it's just, no, someone just made a really nice statue and put it somewhere in the crowd for some reason. (laughs) It's like someone just lost a statue and it just happens to, (laughs) to, to, to end up somewhere that could feasibly be a good busking zone. Now, do I have a bowl? I mean, you have whatever you decided to take out of your carriage. I do not. Is there somewhere around I can buy a bowl? I'm certain, yes. You are in a marketplace. It's, you know, early day. It's a big celebration. No problem finding a bowl. Doesn't even cost you anything. Neat. I'm going to put a bowl at the feet of the statue and wait. (laughs) Uh. <laughs> oh, all right how long are you gonna wait uh we have places to be so probably like five minutes you make 15 gold <laughs> uh. yeah <laughs> um but that that's about as far as that's about as much as you can get before people are realizing like wait a minute that's just a statue <laughs> i'm just going to take that gold and walk away <laughs> all righty uh scoria has a uh, uh pro- obtained some food of her own um a a prodigious amount of fried meats uh and is a uh, uh ready to uh, sort of uh, answer any of your questions as it may, as they may be. Nim is breathing fire. (laughs) 
Um, the the dragonborn who sold you the enchanted candy apple looks pretty amused by uh, your antics. Good. <laughs> and uh, for the rest of the party, uh, you notice that uh, the only other people who seem to be doing the same thing as Nim are children. <laughs> So, uh, so Scoria, uh, finishes eating a, uh, hearty chunk of some kind of animal, uh, and then, uh, uh, turns to you all and goes, so, um, do you want to go somewhere quiet and I can answer any questions like that you have, or at least as best as I can, or, uh, did you have anywhere in particular you wanted to go first? You know the city better than we do, but a private place for questions may be best. Uh, Fros has picked up from somewhere a bowl of porridge, which looks like some of the blandest stuff available. Um, you don't know what she's uh, flavored it with, though. Easy enough to obtain. Uh, Scoria definitely looks a little like, that looks awful. <laughs> um, yes, I, I, I provide my own sustenance from the basics. I practice my arts that way. Cool. That sounds amazing. Um, let's it's just your thing. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> yeah, no, it's an out of character, pre- though. Preston did the Asian flavored cereal. It, it it tastes like whatever she wants it to taste like. <laughs> the best use for that ability I've ever had, and I love it. Fair enough. Um, so yeah, uh, you uh, uh, Scoria uh, upon you know those comments decides. Uh, Maybe we should just go back to my place for a little bit. And yeah, you are led well. back to uh, uh, her home on Pony Way. And uh, yeah, so do this This is the time to ask sort of any questions you might have. So once we find him, how do we prove that we are his uh, children? Um, so Scoria... Uh, takes a moment, looks a little crestfallen, like, oh no, how could I have missed that? Um, and then, uh, well, let me do something real fast. Uh, she's not a good actress. You all, you all immediately catch on that she is faking this, uh, disappointment. Uh, and she pulls out a, uh, after, you know, a, a two minute, I'm gonna say two full minutes of this terrible acting, uh, she pulls a scroll out of her, uh, uh, uh out of her, uh, like, a drawer nearby and goes, it's this. It's, uh, and she, like, full, uh, pulls it open. It's some sort of magical scroll. You don't know that runes are in, inf- uh, not infernal, um, abyssal. <laughs> that was the one. Uh, and she goes, I paid a pretty penny for this, but this is a, uh, uh, some sort of homebrew spell or something but uh uh with it, she sort of pricks her finger and uh a little a uh, little pool of blood sort of beads on the end of it and she wipes it across the bottom of the uh page and uh as this happens all five of you begin glowing <laughs> um it's just a it's just a small like light that seems to be emitting from your skin she goes Anyone who's related uh, in the, I think it's like a 20-foot circle or whatever, um, is identified with just a little bit of uh, DNA. So we just walk around with this and just step blood on it until we find him? That could work, but uh, she sort of... um, she pulls out another scroll, which is a list of all of the Feodors in Drabast, and goes, it could take a really long time if we do that. Uh, there are like 40 Feodors listed on here. And if we got them all into the same room at the same time. Huh. I see. Yeah. And on top of that, if it's uh, like, as I said, this is sort of a homebrew spell. I don't know how legally 
binding it is. Well, it works just fine right now. I'm more concerned with, are there limits on its use? Um, can we, could we, in theory, keep using it? Or is it, as many magic things are, of limited potency? There are three charges on it now, is her sort of comment. Um, it oh. takes a bit more to use. I can recharge it, but that's going to take another... She sort of looks down. Uh, two months? <laughs> two months? To recharge? As I said, it's a bit of a homebrew, and the ingredients to recharge it are... complicated. Um, and kind of as she says that, you hear uh, a very, very loud banging and some sort of, like monstrous growls coming from Scoria's basement. I see. Yeah. Well, well then, this list of uh, Theodores you have, um, what do you actually know about most of them? Uh, she goes down the list and she lists... Uh, sh she... Scoria goes down the list, and she has, at the very top of the page, Kang Feodor, uh, the prolific, <laughs> is the uh, nickname that he has apparently been given. Um, and uh, below that is a another Feodor, who is apparently the advisor to the king, um, and was someone who apparently traveled with him uh, during his sort of group his adventuring days many years ago. Um, there is uh, yet another Feodor who is a noble um, who could have feasibly done it. She basically lists off about 10 to 12 potential candidates that she has, like, absolute knowledge of they went adventuring at some point in their lives. You know, there's, like, a blacksmith, there's a merchant, there's the, the king, his advisor, the noble... Um, there's a hunter who lives on the far edge of town. Uh, there's a, a wizard who basically hasn't been seen in several months, uh, but could feasibly um, have been an adventurer. Um, you know, there, 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 there are a few others, but um, she only has like 12 that... Uh, seem likely suspects which is still a bit more than <laughs> her uh, uh her her scroll can handle so how old is hey, everyone here not 40. if this is king Theodore's fifth child how far apart have the births been spaced um she <laughs> scoria sort of rubs her head and goes one and a half years. There. That is within human gestation time. Yes, it is within human gestation time. Uh, <laughs> the, oh, so you mean he gets around a lot? I get it. Yes. It with, yes, he does. Is it with just, just, um, is he married or does he have a, a set of, uh, how do I put this delicately? Concubines. No, it's just the one wife that we know wow. of. So, um, <laughs> she's brave, a lot braver than I, I'll tell you that. So how old are all? 28. Oh, sorry. Okay, sorry, you cut off for a second. Okay. So I'm going to assume we're all between 26 and 30 years old then. Actually, uh, Frost is only 20. Nim's okay. 22, maybe. Well, She's I don't know how short. old Corey is. <laughs> All right. Then again, Dragonborn become adult earlier, so. Mm -hmm. So, that means whoever is our father went out adventuring for at least eight years, or went out multiple times. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Corey, not Corey, sorry, Scoria. <laughs> Scoria. Uh, I just realized how similar those names kind of are. <laughs> um, hmm. Scoria uh, takes a moment and goes, yeah, that's the other thing. All 12 of these guys are kind of the same age as far as I know. Except, and she points out the wizard, as far as I can tell, this guy is like a hundred. Hmm. And how long ago did each of them go adventuring? Uh, well, as far as I can tell, this wizard guy has gone out, could be as far as soon as recently. Um, but, uh, the last one I can recall, and she sort of lists them out, and, uh, it only shrinks the, uh, list by two. Because she only knows a little bit more about, uh, two of them. Hey, so. 12 down to 10, that's a start. Yeah. Um, there's still, hold on, let me give you guys uh, just a quick set of notes of just who all potential Feodors. Should probably have made this earlier. And then do we know where they went adventuring? Or do we need to ask them? Yeah, uh, she goes, that I didn't get a chance to check. I've just gone, this is just from word around town and None of them know exactly where anybody went. Uh, uh, um, and to cut off another question of answer, she goes, and they're all human. I have checked this. <laughs> I already eliminated all of the non-human Feodors. Uh, I should say sailor, uh, ship captain. That's probably better. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, Fedor. There we go. So those are the ten Feodors you have: King Feodor, Feodor the Advisor, Feodor the Blacksmith, Feodor the Wizard, Feodor the Hunter. Fedor the merchant, Fedor the tailor, Fedor the ship captain, Fedor the entertainer, and Fedor the beggar. So those are the ten that you have in your. Uh, should be. Yes, make this public. Make this public, please. Good night. There we go. All right. There's a public note now for the five eight for you. For, uh, yeah, it better not be the beggar. If it's the beggar, <laughs> I'm going to be really sad about everything. I bet the ship captain's a lot of fun. All right. So, uh, Scoria kind of looks at you all and goes, do you have any more questions or do we want to get this thing started? How were you thinking of proceeding? Well, there's... Two that we won't really be able to get to. Oh, I forgot. To, I messed up one. I forgot. I said the. Uh, the tailor is the one that's the noble. I don't know why I missed that. Here we go. Um, ah, crap. I made the note on public again. Sorry. There are so many things to click. <laughs> um, Scoria look, looks at you and goes, well, there's basically... Two, maybe three, we can't really get at at the moment because the king and his advisor are pretty much always in the castle. Um, but we might be, we should be able to check out the other eight, and there are five of us split up. Yes, I can only see that going well. <laughs> Do you I suspect that? Nebula and Nim should stick together. Do you, Scoria kind of looks at Nebula after that comment and goes, do you have a better plan? No, I don't. I just think that... Well, what are we going to do if they don't want to be found? 
let's say. Uh, <laughs> Scoria sort of pauses at that and goes, hmm. Kidnap him? That's not a good thing to do. Well, it's only temporary. It's not like we're going to ransom him or anything. Uh, I don't think we can kidnap a bunch of these people. We don't have to kidnap a bunch, just whichever ones don't want to be found. Whomever those Let are. us handle the ones that want to be found first. Scrier rolls her eyes and goes, okay, fine, fine. Um, uh, I'll, uh, I'll tell you what, how about I, um, and she sort of puts a big circle around the list that says, uh, the king and the advisor. I'll go see if I can get us some passage into the castle, uh, in case it's none of the others. Um, and the, the rest can be sort of divvied among you, if that's okay. Does that, does that work for everyone? Or did someone else want to try and get into the castle? No, that works. If you think you can get the passages to the castle, we can check the others. Now the question is, who takes which? I'll take the hunter. And... Tim, I'm assuming you're traveling with me. Uh, sure. And we'll take the ship captain and the entertainer, if nobody minds. My hunch is the blacksmith and the merchant may be near each other, so it would be convenient for me to take both. The bigger two, unfortunately. Um, Scoria takes a moment and goes, um, maybe... You gotten me worried about this, Nebula, but in... Maybe you guys should go in pairs of two if they in case they don't want to be found. It's not that I don't think you can't handle yourselves. I mean, look at you. It just feels like it might be better. That is what I was thinking. Corey, would you be willing to come with me? Very well. I am not the best when speaking. Yes. Uh, as intimated, if there are problems finding them, that may be of more use. Also, if problems arise when speaking, that speech cannot handle. All right. It sounds like we've got a plan then. Um I and she sort of rips the list in into chunks and hands them to each of you uh, and gives you uh, basic directions on where the like rough area where they might be. Uh, Frost is r uh, shuffling it based on um, making sure grouping it into two groups that are roughly near each other. Yeah, there's uh, the that is a fairly easy thing to do. Um. So, uh, who wants to start first? Uh, I think we can go first, then. All, All right. All right. Quarry, Frost, which Fedor do you want to try first? The blacksmith. All right. The blacksmith is uh, in the castle ward, so it's, uh, a, it's south of the market, um, he is specifically in charge of a, uh, uh, a smithy known as the Hawkman. Um. Oh, uh, very quick before we head out. Um, so we know where each of us for and the Ganassi were born, right? Uh, yes, you, uh, y y it's, it's all over the map. I'll just be blunt there. It's. Well, no, but th that's five specific locations that whoever this Fyodor is must have visited. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that would be true. So, yes, you do have that information. That would be something you can use to sort of narrow down the search a little bit more. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, so we're tracking down the blacksmith. Okay, so, yes, the, the blacksmith is in the castle ward. He's at the, the smithy known as the Hawkman. I'll share the thing again. It's 
Eh. Big starred location. Keep it simple. Yep. Um, yes, as you approach, uh, it's now sort of mid-ish morning. Um, the streets are getting more crowded with people. Things are starting to sort of pick up as far as this, uh, celebration is concerned. Uh, and the, uh, the, the forges are running hot at the Hawkman. Um, and, uh, people are sort of crowding around watching this, uh, Smith do his work in the sort of open air. Uh, it's, it's something, it's being treated as something of a performance. Um, and, uh, the first thing you notice about this person is that, uh, this Smith is, uh, quite bearded and, uh, despite being human, like it, he, he does not have any sort of distinguishing features that, uh, imply he would be anything other than human, but he's taller than you, Corey. Hmm. Um, so he's like eight feet tall. He is a big man. Yes. He is like eight feet tall. Um, and he is just sort of like hammering away at this enormous looking battle axe. Um, or at least, you know, you know, beginning to form the shape of a battle axe based on uh, what you can see. All right. And uh, well, how long does it look like you'll be at this? Uh, based on the fact that he uh, just seems to have started. Uh, it could be another, like, two to three hours. So, I'd like to uh, know your enemy, the strength, armor class, and hit points, if they're equal to, greater than, or less than mine. All right. Uh, let me check this. Uh, so, strength, armor class, hit points. Mm -hmm. uh, higher, lower, lower. Okay. Um, so yes, he's, this, this person appears to be very strong, but, uh, uh, I mean, they're not in any sort of armor or anything, so they look, yeah, uh, a little bit squishy. Uh, and based on their age, cause they, they, they appear to be a fairly older man, like mid, yeah. late forties, mid fifties, kind of hard to tell exactly what it is. Um, but, uh, as this sort of presentation begins or continues uh you can see someone in the crowd sort of raises a hand and he the the blacksmith points the hammer like mid like points and then continues swinging uh, at that hand up and the uh the person in the crowd asks uh so uh what what's this axe for then uh and the uh the blacksmith smiles and goes uh well, it's a gift to the king, of course. Gotta celebrate that child somehow, and what better way than with the best weapon I can forge. And uh, it appears that this blacksmith is taking questions from the audience. Okay. Um, Frost waits for a bit, and then uh, waves a hand, waits to be called on. And it's just, uh, so we hear you have adventured um, at, in your younger years. Could you name a few places you've been? Uh, the, uh, the the blacksmith chuckles uh, at the question and goes, Well, I've been over quite a bit of Faerun. Been to the mountains with the giants. Uh, Try to, uh, and he chuckles, and he points to a huge scar that's running on the back of his neck. Uh, had a bit of a tangle with some dragons, and he, at that point, he sort of looks to both of you and goes, I suppose you'd both know what that's like then, wouldn't you? <laughs> uh, but no, I, those days are long behind me. Learned all I could about smithing, and then I was done. We're looking for a Feodor who may have had children on such an adventure would might that be you uh the hammer slips as you say that uh and a big chunk of metal sort of breaks off of this axe uh and uh fedor uh takes a moment and you you hear a very audible oh shit <laughs> um before he uh uh <laughs> 
pour some water on the chunk that is now lying on the floor to uh, cool it, uh, picks it up and tosses it into the sort of scrap <laughs> metal zone, uh, along with the now sort of messed up axe. Uh, before the, the big man sort of turns to you and goes, and why might you be asking that? Frost looks at Kiori, looks at him, because we are looking for her father. Uh, Fedor takes a moment and goes, Okay, um, show's over, everyone. Uh, any points to you two? You two, into the forge. Frost comes in. in. Uh, and he sort of leads you to... The, the people are sort of like, oh man. Uh, and he leads you to a sort of back area of this forge. It's a little more uh, hidden from everything. Uh, and he pulls out a big sort of smoking pipe. And uh, he, uh, he's, he begins to sort of puff on it. Before uh, crossing his arms, crossing his legs uh, at, while sitting in a chair and sort of uh, gestures for you to sit down in the chairs across from him at this uh, large... You guess it's a dining room table based on um, just the size of it. Uh, and he puffs on the pipe for a few moments and goes, All right, who sent you? We sent ourselves. Uh, look, uh, he, he uh, looks... From Frost to Quarry and gestures for Quarry to speak as well. I am searching for my father for the challenge of finding him. That is all. <sighs> well. Uh... I seek my father because he is the only one who knows what my mother was. He looks Dragon, like obviously, but what type? <laughs> Oh, right, right. Uh, he he sort of looks at you. Now that you say that, I actually can't tell what you are, white or gray, white or silver. Hmm. Bit weird, that. Uh, look, it's, uh, it's been a very long time since I've been adventuring, and uh, I made a lot of enemies at that time. I Do you have any sort of proof that that's what you're after, or... We have a magical means of detecting who our father is, but we uh, wish to narrow down the candidates uh, before we unveil that. <sighs> you would know if you had lain with um, anyone on your adventures, right? I was thinking yes, that yes, most of... Yes, yes, I'm aware. I'm... It's a possibility, but I'm just not certain i'm not a biologist or anything like that <laughs> uh he sort of points to the various weapons hanging from the shop this is kind of all i know uh, uh might we have your permission then for an appointment sometime tomorrow after the fest i assume this festivity is for today and tomorrow you'll be less busy yeah that's actually not gonna happen uh I'm actually only here for today. Uh, this is mm. my uh, this is my kid's shop, actually. <laughs> um, when are you leaving? Tomorrow morning. Might we catch you before you leave then, just for a brief um, check to see uh, with, with this uh, magic um, if you are our father. If it's not, if you're not, it will prove it. If it is. Then we can travel together as you leave. You know what? I think I have a better idea than this magic crap. Uh, and he uh, leans across the table and uh, sets an arm down, uh, elbow first, hand up as if to grip another. Uh, and looks at you, Frost, and goes, My, uh... You might have noticed I'm a bit uh, different from the rest of the people around here. Bit taller, bit bulkier. Uh, my kid's like that, too. 
Yes, I am not, and that is why I was suspecting I am probably not, but I wish to be certain before crossing you all. Well, uh, by the way, our other siblings include a tiefling, uh, Asimar, and Gnasi. Uh, he looks he looks a little confused at that, uh, and goes, "Really, that's uh, that's strange." <laughs> Frost Indeed. holds up an arm and tries to hold it next to Corey's arm to demonstrate the difference in strengths. I'm assuming Corey has a strength somewhat above 10. Yeah. Yeah. And Frost Frost does not. I, I forgot that Frost has a relatively low strength by comparison. Yeah. Um, you both also remember that Nim is really short. <laughs> True. And that Nebula is a tiefling. Yes, but uh, again... Uh, uh, this this particular Feodor is not a biologist. He doesn't know what, what necessarily might change as a result of that. Yeah. Uh, best best guess he has is if the kid is as strong as him, maybe. <laughs> um. He uh, Feodor kind of leans back and goes, "Well, that definitely ain't me then." But, so, and he, he sort of leans back. So you're looking for, uh, you're, you're looking for a particular fed or what's traveled a lot, right? Right. Yeah. And specifically a fed or who, and then she rattles off the names in, in rough years that the fed would have had to be there. Well, I will say that, uh. It unfortunately does seem to match up for you two, but I've definitely never uh, encountered a tiefling, so uh, so we can not. be sure that you're not. Thank you. Probably that not. is what we wish to know. That said, uh, he sticks his arm out again in this sort of like arm wrestling sort of gesture. Uh, how about I, I kind of need? Uh, we'll put it this way. I want to make a little wager with you. That's okay. Um, and what would that be? I might have some more information on uh, a Feodor who could have been in those areas. And I also need to make up for the material that someone just broke by distracting me. So, uh, how about a little competition? Uh, I win. I take some of your some of your gold to cover the expenses of that broken axe that I now have to finish in half the time. You win. I'll let you go there, and I'll give you what info I know about the other uh, Theodores who I might have encountered in my travels. Kaori, do you? So, this would be a challenge to you. Do you wish to accept? How much gold for the reimbursement? Well, I was using some of the finest metal I have, so probably at least a hundred. Very well. I shall accept your wager. All right. Time to do a... Let's see. This feels athletic -y. athletic So let me make a roll myself. Uh, I'm going to do it in secret. Uh, wow. You, uh, uh, you trounce him. It's actually not, it, it's, uh, like, it was, the the initial confrontation was difficult, um, because, again, the dude is very strong, uh, but you just, you kind of, you're kind of used to wrestling with giants, or at least interacting with giants more regularly, um, yeah. And big as this man is, he is not a giant. Uh, you, yeah, you trounce him. And uh, okay. he, he starts rubbing the arm and goes, well, that's going to make smithing more difficult. <laughs> um, but he sort of smiles and goes, <laughs> it's uh, good to have a challenge like that again. I haven't. <laughs> you remind me of the giants I used to arm wrestle with. 
Uh, that never went well for me either, but hey, you gotta try, right? Uh, and he, uh, takes a moment, he goes to the back, uh, and he pulls out a, uh, it looks like sort of a well-worn diary, uh, and he slams it down on the table, he starts flipping through a few pages, uh, and he, uh, begins to sort of point out, uh, he, he like, he, he's looking for a particular entry in this diary, uh, and he goes, well, uh... Right, so the other Feodor I met, the, uh, the, the other, I guess it was two, um, on different days, and he sort of points out, like, two different entries to show that, like, you know, it was over a different, like, an expanded period of time. Uh, the first one, uh, real wealthy guy. He, uh, he and I sort of got into a scrap, and, uh, well, when I won, he, uh, offered to pay me to, uh, never speak of it to anybody. So, uh. There's that. And he was definitely in the same sorts of areas that I traveled. Told me, he, and he takes a moment. Now that I think about it, he definitely told me something about a tiefling he'd encountered. So, that could be your guy. Or, and he flips to the other page. When I was with the dragons, I met this other Fyodor who happened to, uh, uh, be quite, uh, hot on one of the dragons. Don't ask me why, uh, it was, a uh, uh, man liked his treasure, it seemed like. It seemed to be, uh, real keen on adventure there. And that's, uh, it, it's not much, but, uh, I mean, things change, so. It's about all I can give you. That matches up with two of the others we were thinking of, uh, approaching, Thank you. That that puts a priority on approaching those two. All right. And uh, he looks at you, Corey, and goes, "Hey, if you ever need a weapon built, send me a send me a line. I'll be happy to build something for you." Very well. I'm gonna give him a hundred gold. Oh. Uh, he uh, appreciates it, but then uh, hands it back and goes, no, no. Competition's a competition. I lost fair and square. Very well. At least let me do the honor of heating your forge to warm it back up for you, sir. Well, I'd be happy to hear it. That would uh, that'd be quite a help. Thank you. And Frost goes out and presses to the station. Warm up the forge. All right. And uh, with that Feodor down, let's cut over to Nim and Nebula. Who are you going after? Uh, uh, the Entertainer. Uh, sure. Feodor, Why not? Feodor the Entertainer? Yeah. Yes. All right. Uh, he is... Uh, he's actually, uh, from what you can tell, he is over at the uh, very place where you stored your carriage. He is, whoops, hold on. Let me get that map back up. He is at the Sword Maiden. Uh, and it, like I said, it's a big tavern. It's like, it, you know, it's big enough to house carriages and stables and such. Uh, and he is uh, the flashiest man you've ever met. Um... The, the the clothing he's wearing does not look like it's made of better material than yours, Nebula. Uh, but it is, like, something about the style and the cut. He makes it look really good. Um, it's just a little too gaudy for your taste. Uh, and he is, uh, uh, he's got an entire band behind him. He is, uh just laying out a, a, a wildly raucous tune for the audience of the Shield Maiden this early morning. Is he good? He's very good. Um, you, uh, you... The, the, the voice in your head says, if you weren't you, he might be better than you. <laughs> <laughs> But he's not, because I'm me, so it's fine. Yes. 
Um, and you know, it, it takes a, a few minutes for him to sort of like get through a, a tune and he sort of announces to the crowd, uh, all right, everyone, I'm done for now, but you can catch me again on the main stage for tonight's performance till then. And he points to the bartender and goes around on me. And uh, there are raucous cheers in this tavern as people start lining up to get booze, despite the fact that it is probably like 10 a.m. Well, he seems <laughs> nice. Yes, he does, does he not? What do you think? A potential? I mean, I said he seemed nice. I don't know. I've never seen him before. I don't have any preconceptions. Well... Let's find out, shall we? I will um, gesture to, to Nim and approach. Uh, yes. So uh, as you you, you can uh, approach him fairly easily, uh, he's you know seems to be talking with the band members. Um, you can hear uh, it, it's a bit hard to hear over the sort of raucous noise that's happening in this tavern, um, but you can hear he seems to be berating a few of them. Um, Saying, you know, saying some things that, uh, Nebula, you might be a little bit used to and that, like, some people were pitchy, some people were off. Um, you hear what, you hear one particular one being, and you, just you. <laughs> um, and... Nim has a very concerned <laughs> look on her face as she hears this. Uh, and, uh... Uh, like basically it's an it's almost instantaneous but he turns around before you can even like fully get to him uh and there's a big wide smile on his face and he uh he uh says to the both of you ah some adoring fans huh what can i do for you we would like a moment of your time if we can ho oh, but a moment of my time costs quite a lot what are you I'm willing to pay for sure. my time? It would depend on your prices. Well, it's only fair to pay top dollar for the great Theodore the Entertainer. You should pay for his time with your time. Well, yeah. Well, you Even say for great, this question? but... As you say, your band was a little off, which is why, of course, I performed solo. You had one a uh, perfectionist hardly needs backup. Uh and he uh he sort of takes a small bit of offense to that and uh then uh <laughs> like you know, you see for a brief moment like a flash of like how dare you cross his face. <laughs> uh and then he just sort of smiles and goes well, you don't really stand out unless you have something to stand against. I'm sure your little podunk shows are wonderful for the farmers or whatever. Yes, I'm sure that you need all the help you can get to stand out. But um, we do have, me and my uh, friend here do have some questions for you. Oh, so, very well. If it will get you out of my hair, I'll answer... Two questions. How about that? Excellent. Nim, would you like to start? Uh, are you sure? Absolutely. Uh, and there were your two questions. Good day. <laughs> oh, that little shit. <laughs> <laughs> but they weren't directed at you. Don't care. <laughs> but um, that's not fair. Uh, I will... <laughs> is he just turning to walk away? Is he just turning to walk away? He is a hundred percent turning to walk away. <laughs> I will rise up for like, you know, full height, proper mm -hmm. thing, and be like Of course a talentless hack would use trickery against two much more talented performers. Mm. Tell me. Uh, <laughs> uh he as he's walking away, you just hear him go. Well, if they were so talented, they wouldn't have fallen for it. Well, that's life I in mean, the big city. Well, I mean, my mother fell for you, so I do know what stupidity looks like. Uh, 
That seems to have gotten him. Uh, uh, and uh, he turns around to you uh, and goes, what was that? I think we should have that talk, shall we? And I'll gesture to the bar. He takes a moment, rolls his eyes, and says, fine, fine. Uh, and yes, you, uh, the, the, he, he, uh, he approaches the bar. He does not sit down. Um, he does make a gesture to the uh, bartender to make three drinks of some kind. You don't know exactly what yet, but, uh, the bartender gets to work. So I'll just cut to the chase because I do not have time to deal with you. What was this about? Mother? Myself and my companion here, uh, my, well, step-sibling, we're looking for our father. Uh, we know his name is Theodore, like yourself. Mm-hmm. And that's about all we've got to go on. So we're doing a little citywide hunt, let's say. And you're almost talented enough to have sired me. Mm. You do have... Most of my wit. <laughs> uh, oh, I like this guy. <laughs> uh, and he he sort of turns to Nim and goes, uh, and what about this one? What, the Asimov? Is that what she is? I, that is what she claims at the very least. Hmm. Yeah, I don't freaking know. <laughs> I suppose that could be the case. Look, the... I'll put it this way. Uh, 20 years ago is a bit of a blur to me. Um, in fact, most years are a blur to me. The life I live is quite on top of things. Uh, he sort of makes it... The, the bartender sort of finishes whatever drinks that... Um, he had been brewing and uh, passes it down the line. Uh, it looks very uh, like it, it. it's not beer. It's not wine. It, it's a mixed drink of some kind. It's you don't know exactly what it is. Um, but uh, he grabs one of the three and uh, just sort of downs it rather fast. And then just can I insight to see if he's actually drinking it? <laughs> yeah, go for it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that thing is really gone. Okay. <laughs> um, and uh, he sort of gestures for the two of you to pick up your drinks and uh, then says, well, if you don't, I'll drink them myself. I'm not going to waste good booze. I'll, uh, I'll take Then we'll down it in one shot. I'm sorry. <laughs> Con rolls for both of you, please. <laughs> Oh, yeah, great, because my, my con is fantastic. Nebula? Fuck. Weird. Is it not? Are, are you having some problems? Yeah, I'm clicking the button, and I'm getting the die, you and I'm to, rolling yeah. it. Oh, there you go. Got it. Uh... <laughs> I just had to do it. Th- I just had to do it three times in a row. Apparently. Oof. Yeah, I've had to double click the skills to get it to roll. Oh, I usually click on the thing and then drag it into the chat box. Yeah, I- cathartic for throwing it across the table. <laughs> uh the it, the first like half of the drink, very sweet. You you can't really taste any alcohol in it, and then it hits you all at once. Um, and there was a lot of alcohol in this beverage, whatever it is. Um, and, uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, like, I'm not going to say you are both drunk now, but you are both like pretty immediately tipsy. Um, 
I'm probably drunk. I mean, I was day drinking earlier. <laughs> you kind of were. You might be a little drunk at this point. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, and uh, he, as you finish your drinks, uh, Theodore gestures for the bartender to make three more. Nope. Uh, <laughs> uh, nope. <laughs> and uh, then goes, uh, so what exactly is your proof or what, what, what makes you believe that I could have sired you two. Well, it's not just um, us two. There's another three kicking about. A uh, There's Frost and Kalori! Half giant a fire oh, I'm sorry, I've forgotten my words. Genasi, oh, that's Skori. Genasi, that's right. And um, whatever the other one was. Dragonborn. That one. Yes, the the lizard. Hmm. Well, that's all very plausible. I have had many types of fans. Uh, and the second round of drinks comes by. <laughs> he, uh, he chugs his down again. And, uh... Yeah, no, he's not, be he's not beating me at this. <laughs> I'm not touching it. Well, that went well. Uh, the good news is, uh, this one was not brewed as well. The alcohol in it is not as strong. It's still there, but you, uh, uh, you are in a... Used to it. Yeah, you, you, it's, it's not making you any drunker than you currently are. Um, okay. you're, you're starting to get the idea of like, okay, I think I see how he can chug multiples of these at once. Um, and also at the same time, you're like, and I understand why he's missing a big chunk of his life. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Um, if this is his go-to drink, uh, yeah. Um, he, uh, uh, the uh, Feodor takes a moment and goes, so, uh, <clears throat> all right. So, uh, a, a Genasi, a dragonborn, a half giant, a tiefling, an Asimar, Anything else I should know about before? Probably, but this is all we really know. Oh, we have that. Um. Oh, what was it? The the spell. Yes, we have a we have like a spell that we can cast that glows or something. Nim, you you know what you were listening. Yeah, but she doesn't have that many uses of it. Yes, but this one seems like a fairly likely candidate. Um, I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> you said that He's out loud, kind of right? A prude. <laughs> uh, Fanor takes like gives a what kind of eyebrow motion to that and goes, "I think you're getting your words mixed up." No, <laughs> I think you're kind of a jerk. <laughs> okay, that I can accept. That is a word that I am used to, but prude, please. Um, <laughs> I want you all to make an insight roll for me. Okay. I need help. Yes, uh, sir. What would you like? <laughs> Nebula. Yep, sorry, it's being a butt. No worries. Do not... You want me to roll for you? Do, that. do not do that. Hmm, Just to be weird. sure, you are releasing it over the chat window, right? Yeah. All right. Only records which you own can be shared. Yeah. I have rolled for you. Thank you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know I, what's happening. I have no idea. <laughs> sorry. Oh, are you pressing the... The black die and not the square with the number in it. Yeah, I think you're oh, hitting yeah, just to the right of it. Yeah, yeah, that'll be that'll be why. Yeah, yeah. are you drunk? Nine. <laughs> yes, yes, I am. Uh, all right. Or at least. Wait, okay, so here's what I'm gonna say. With a nine, uh, you don't. You're too drunk. Yeah, you're too drunk. Um, Nim, you're not sure if this is the alcohol or if it's uh just 
you know, some sort of keen sort of insight, uh, you notice something weird about this Theodore's face. It's perfectly symmetrical. And in a way that is clearly not like, uh, it, like th that doesn't happen often with humans. Um, but then sort of as you are, uh, like as this gut feeling of something isn't right hits you, uh, you see a very, very, very small change to his face. Oh. Um, it's, it's a, you, you're not entirely sure what it is, but your, your gut feeling has told you, like, there's something weird about this dude. Gonna poke his face. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um. As, okay, I need, hmm, let me figure out something real fast. Uh, I'm gonna roll an insight for him real fast. That's what, uh, insight is wisdom, so. It is wisdom modifier is. <laughs> wow. Um, he, uh, y you never quite reach his face. He, like, pulls back from you as, as that happens and shoves one of the drinks into your hand. Uh, and, and as he says that, he looks at you and goes, I refuse to speak with someone who's sober. They're just no fun. Uh, I'm trying to figure out a way to word this, but I want to roll acrobatics. <laughs> I'm trying to be funny. All right. <laughs> um, I want to try and take, take it, throw it up, and then move around to touch his face from the back. Okay, go for it. Roll. You know what? That sounds that sounds entertaining enough. Go for it. Damn it! <laughs> oh. It was almost a nineteen. <laughs> All right, let's see what his reflexes are. Bad. Um, he does not dodge. Um, yes, you knock the drink into the air, uh, and y y like. He, uh, reacting to the fact that this drink is now flying into the air, uh, like, leans forward, giving you ample opportunity to sort of poke at him from the back. Uh, and as you do so, you push him forward just slightly enough that the glass falls on his head and douses him in this, in this drink. Uh, and when he, like hits the ground, you notice that his skin has shifted colors. Um, like, his hair has t gone from, like, kind of, uh, uh, like, thick and luscious brown to kind of a stringy black, and his skin has gone from, like, you know, sort of a, a pinkish color to very pale white. Um, and, uh, he, like, he's on the ground, face down, uh, and he sort of, you can see his body sort of, like, shaking. Uh, and he, uh, like, he quickly stands up, covers his face, and goes, And now if you'll excuse me, ladies, I think I'm done. And he r starts trying to run off. Trip. I need a roll <laughs> of some kind. Dex. I mean, it feels athletics-y. You can roll athletics again. Or, ac or uh, acrobatics. Feels more dexterous. Yeah, he trips and hits face first again. Um, and this time you can see that, uh, uh, like, he... That ain't a human. That's a changeling. Um. Huh. And, uh, he sort of like he again sort of stands up and at this point he like pulls his uh uh sort of cloak around him like he puts it up over him is like uh, uh trying to sort of uh cover himself and also uh says to those i need to change clothes excuse me this is absolutely awful and if you are quite finished uh he says uh 
still face mostly covered as he starts heading towards the back of this tavern. Mm. Well, I'm not a biologist, but I'm assuming... <laughs> I'm assuming... Well, I'm not a biologist, and I'm drunk. So, yeah, I'm just gonna let him go. Uh, yeah. So, um... I think you have, uh... uh successfully managed to identify that you are not in fact dealing with uh your dad <laughs> i liked him he was fun uh, he was a prick <laughs> oh yeah that's why he was fun why i was really happy when you two asked two questions immediately after i said that <laughs> just to each other <laughs> i just i was gonna be the blunt and i didn't want to do that <laughs> um so, unfortunately, no other information other than this Theodore is probably not your dad. Um, hey, at least we can cross him off the list. Yep, you can cross him off the list. Uh, let's cut back to Frost and Quarry. Who do you want to go after next? So, the information suggests the Taylor Noble and the Merchant. Which one of them is closer? Uh, to y'all? The one that is probably closest to you all is uh, the merchant at this point. Then that's where we head. All right. Um, the uh, the merchant is. Let me pull up the maps again. It's very difficult for me to get them all. So many. So many maps. And they're all so very large. Eek. So, the uh, the merchant is uh, north of the uh, north of the blacksmith. Um, he is at uh, his uh, uh... the market? No, he's actually not at the market. Um, he's uh, at the Lady Dreaming. That is the apparently the name of his particular store. Um, so it's in the sort of like it's near the ocean. It's actually up a cliff. Um, there, like, there's a, a stairway up, so it's not like impossible to get to. But um, and if there wasn't, well, we have the cliff climber. So it's true. Um, and it's a very nice part of town. Like you know, you don't get seaside slash cliffside uh, views without paying a pretty hefty sum. Well, it looks like there's a wall there, so they might not be getting too many seaside views. It's still close. Like, I think the, the big part of it is actually, like, the, the I think the, this wall is shorter than the others, so it's fairly mm. easy to get past it, but it's still close enough to the water that, like, you can do stuff. Yeah. It's still a very nice part of town. That's all I'm getting at. Uh, and you two stick out like a sore thumb. Uh, so yes, uh, Theodore the Merchant has the, his lovely shop, The Lady Dreaming. Uh, it seems to sell a, uh, wide variety of items, things that you can definitely only get with, uh, extensive travel or very extensive connections. Um, and, uh, this particular shop has, uh, just from the windows, you can see things like dragon fangs and you can see um like dwarven mining gear and it's it's a bunch of exotic pieces um the store seems to be closed though for the day um you can tell that there's someone there because there are lights on in the back but the actual store front is closed how tall is the store uh, it's roughly human size, so it, the, like, the door's probably around six feet, and the shop height is, like, eight. It's actually a very small store, because it seems to be part house. How easy is it to get around to the back? Um, fairly easy, but, uh, again, it's, it looks a little odd for you guys, because there are neighbors to this house, slash shop. Well, Kiori, uh, do we want to uh, knock or do we want to go to where the person is? With our luck, that's the merchant back in the back. 
I'd say we just knock. Yeah. Odd that the store would be closed on a day like this. And Frost knocks. Uh, yeah, there's a, uh, you hear sort of like shuffling inside and then you hear uh, a voice call out, we're closed, go away. We are looking for Theodore. You found him, but we're still closed. Go away. We're looking for the Theodore who might be our father. Uh, you, (laughs) there's a moment where you hear, um, like, the shuffling sort of stop. Uh, and then, um, the merchant, uh, uh, like, he comes charging to the front door pretty dang fast. Uh, you see him, like, pull out a key, unlock the door, uh, open it, and, uh, uh, he looks at the two of you and goes, I'm not certain that's possible. (laughs) Please. We we know a Theodore in the city was our father. We are trying to... Um, we will, we can try to take as little of your time as possible if you are not the one. He, he sort of looks back and forth between you and goes, uh, and then he looks out into the streets, um, to see like how many people are around. There's a, there's a few, but like not too many and it's more upper class people. So probably not liable to actually, uh, help you out or help him out. And, uh, he looks at both of you and goes, If you're just going to mug me, can I just hand you some money and you can leave me be? We are only mugging you for information. Money is not what we are looking for. If we can step aside, if we can come inside for a moment, we can ask our questions quickly and no one else would hear. (laughs) He looks like he's kind of dreading it. Um, And then sort of steps aside and says... Fine, but we stay right here at the door. As you wish. And Frost steps inside. Uh, I'll bend down and go in, too. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a tight squeeze for you, Corey. <laughs> um, yep. He, uh, he looks at the two of you and goes, uh, All right, what, what questions do you have? I'll answer them as quickly as I can. Uh, so we have questions about your prior adventures. And then Frost lists out a list of names and places and dates. Um, were you at the, all, all of these locations around these time? Uh, sort of as you say that, he goes, yes, yes, no, yes, no. So I assume that answers your questions. Okay, so it's definitely a no to the third and the fifth? Yes. I have had no interactions with Celestials or with Elementals. Okay, thank you. Yes, that answers our questions. Good day. Um, I'm roll insight before we go. Yeah, roll insight before you go. Uh, he is lying. Frost, you do not think he is lying. He is not being truthful. Frost stops, turns, eyes the merchant. We do have ways of magically detecting the truth. We did not presume to break them out. We would presume honesty. Uh, the the merchant uh, looks back and forth uh, pretty nervously between the two of you. Uh, and then you see him reach into his coat, uh, pull out a scroll uh, that you can read says uh, invisibility on it. <laughs> yeah, um, if he casts it, then uh, Frost casts Counterspell. Um, <laughs> all right. He, he, he does cast it, and you cast invisibility, and you see... Uh, no, I, I cast Counterspell. Sorry, other, I, sorry, I said it in reverse. He casts invisibility, you cast Counterspell. Sorry. Um, and he, uh, looks real nervous and goes, who sent you? We sent ourselves. 
I have trouble believing someone asking for those specific places on those specific dates is actually just sending themselves. Who sent you? I am simply seeking my father for the challenge of finding him. That is all. I am seeking my father because I wish to know of my mother, and my father may be the only one left who knows her. Uh, he looks towards the back of the shop, uh, and says, and you're here for nothing else, correct? Indeed. Indeed. We are here for inform that specific information. Which Fyodor in town is our father? Um, he bites his lip and goes, I, I can say with total certainty that I could not have been either of your fathers. Do 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 do. do. Is that <laughs> <I> awesome? <laughs> okay, he is telling the truth about that. Okay, I will like I will say that he definitely, definitely is telling the truth that he is not specifically either of your fathers. <laughs> Frost looks to Curie. Are you sure he is telling the truth now? He is being truthful. Okay. Uh, and Frost, I want you to roll one other thing for me. Yeah? Um, go ahead and roll, uh, Perception. Of course, I keep getting sevens. <laughs> well, it's not too bad. Sevens. Uh, I, honestly, uh, it's kind of carrying over from earlier. You recognize his voice now that he's spoken a few more times. Yes. This is, uh, at least one of the voices you heard talking about a heist. Um. Uh, hmm. Frost, no, Frost nods at this. Uh, doesn't say anything about it yet. Uh, with with that, the merchant sort of uh, looks at the two and goes, is that all that you want from me? If you uh, have no further information, then we shall take our leave. I am not familiar with any other Theodores in this town. I know of our king, but I do not know much about him. Very well. Frost turns to leave, and as she's at the door before opening, oh, um, since you have done us a favor of this honesty, I shall give you some honesty too. Uh, you may not wish to speak of heists in public. It was a little loud earlier. Uh, and then she just leaves. He goes real pale at that. <laughs> and she and Frost just walks right out. All right. I care not of heists. I follow as well. All right, uh, we will cut back to Nebula and Nim. Who are you going after next? We're going to the ship, Captain. Yeah. All right. Uh, let me get the dock maps. Uh, I believe that is the southwest. Yes. Just need All to the get water the maps. maps. Just need to get the one that's not... Uh, DM based, I guess, because it doesn't matter. Player based. So, yes. Uh, he is uh, obviously at the docks because uh, he he's a ship captain and that is where ship captains always stay. Movies have told me this. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. I believe Why you. would movies ever lie? Yes. Uh, he is in the shop, shopping dock area uh, near Coin Alley. It's a uh, a very, very like. He's he's in this general area on the uh, on the longest dock. It's the biggest ship in this private dock area. Um, it's a full on like galleon, um, but uh, it seems to be pretty empty aside from one man who is just sitting on a chair on the starboard part starboard side of the ship, uh, just staring out into the ocean, drinking some ale. <laughs> <laughs> Hooray, more alcohol. I think mean, we're already I mean, dragging around Nebula who's drunk. Going to the entertainer first was my best 
idea ever. Uh, I'll say, for, I, I meant to say this when we switched, o- switched over to Quarry and Frost, but at this point, it's around noon for both of you guys. For for all four of you, I should say. <laughs> oh, wait, I've been drinking and noon. I haven't been eating? Neat. <laughs> you could have gotten some food before you left the tavern. Possibly. I probably had something, but not a lot. Um, so I'm going to turn to Nim and just be like, Nim, darling, I'm feeling a little under the weather. Would you be able to attract his attention? Uh, sir! Excuse me! <laughs> As you oh, yell, he oh, falls oh, over backwards oh, in his chair. <laughs> he looks super surprised by that, and uh, you can see he's spilled his ale all over himself. Uh-oh. Uh, and he gets up, and he's just sort of shaking himself off. Uh, but despite that, he kind of, like, looks at you and smiles and waves, but he doesn't say anything. He's just sort of, like, cheerfully smiling. Sir, can we come up and ask you some questions? Uh, he takes a moment, shrugs, and then gestures for you to enter the ship from the from the dock. Okay, I'm going to drag Nebula up to, <laughs> onto the boat. Hey, what's better than oh, being drunk on the water? Angel. Being drunk everything. underwater. Literally, li- literally everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, when you get up to the the top of the ship, you can see that uh, this, uh, this man is, uh, um, you know, he's dressed in... What was some pretty nice clothing, aside from the fact that it's now covered in ale. Um, and uh, he sort of gestures for you to sort of like, he, he like where he was sitting, he has pulled up two more chairs to sort of sit and stare out over the water. Um, and uh, gestures for the two of you to sit and join him. Thank you. Sorry about uh, your drink. Uh, he like he basically gives you a wave of like, ah, it's no problem. I will sit. Sit. Uh. Mm. So we're looking for our dad. Are you Fyodor? <laughs> he, you hear a sort of like, what? Uh, <laughs> but uh, he turns to you, uh, sort of looks at you up and down, and then he shrugs again. So uh, no. He uh like I said, he 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 looks at you, shrugs again. Um and then uh uh so, then he just sort of sits there. He's being real quiet. <laughs> let me let me start again. Are you Theodore? He nods. Can you Is speak? <laughs> Uh, when you ask, can you speak, he, uh, shakes his head no, and then opens his mouth to reveal his tongue has been cut off. (gasps) I'm so sorry, sir! He shrugs, uh, and sort of, uh, he sort of gestures at you. You, I don't think you have any idea what he's getting at. Um, but he doesn't look terribly, like, upset about the fact that he's missing his tongue. Um... Oh, I think odd. Um, so would you have been any of these? And I'll give him a list of the places in the last twenty years. Also, uh, he does nod for each of them. Like, yeah, that sounds right. That sounds right. Uh, he even actually at some at like some point during this, like basically after you finish, he goes like back to the. Uh, to the like captain's quarters of the ship uh, and pulls out um, a, an enormous shipping manifesto uh, and points out the various locations that he's been to that match up roughly with the time frames you guys are talking about. Neat. Um, but uh. again, he sort of shrugs at the idea of like being your parent. <laughs> And I'm sorry, I don't really have the wither roll right now to put it delicately. Um, did you have 
relations at each of these places during this time? Uh, he sort of like tilts his head as if, as if he's thinking pretty hard about this. Um, I'll say this. He looks significantly older than most of the uh, people you've encountered. Like he looks to be maybe late 60s, early 70s. He still looks like he's in good shape, but he's definitely an older man at this point. I mean, um, considering all of our ages, that would be pretty. Yeah. Um, He'd be like 40 when he mm-hmm. did anything. True. But, uh. <laughs> what? I'm trying I mean, the to oldest is 28. 13. Yeah. Um. But, uh, 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 he, he, he genuinely sort of like shrugs and goes, I basically says like, I can't, I honestly couldn't tell you. It's been a very long time and I travel all over the place. Like he, he literally like flip, like he basically pulls open the book again and just shows you like how many locations he's been to. And this man is well traveled. Right. Um, so you're saying it's possible, then? He does nod to that. Um, I want uh, two of you to go ahead and roll history. That seems reasonable here. All right, let's click the right button. <laughs> that's bad <laughs> that's good that's better that's significantly better uh it's both sides of the co- <laughs> it is both <laughs> sides, of the coin. sides of the coin nebula uh r- real fast nim uh nothing is sort of clicking it's just like oh this is you know this is a, a well-traveled man who uh you know had something bad happen to him but he seems real nice that's about mm-hmm. all you you get out of it, and you know. That's the, all I care about right now. He's nice. Yes, uh, Nebula, you are used to uh, like the sort of documents and ledgers that uh, this man carries. Like you, your uh, your your time in the the entertainment industry has uh, uh, left you with some understanding of at least how paperwork works, uh, which is more yep. than a monk can say. <laughs> uh. I couldn't even justify knowing any of that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you notice that there is uh, a similarity between all of the sort of like locations you listed and dates you listed, like in his ledger. Those were all times he was carrying stuff for the king. Mm. Okay. <laughs> So it might be him, or we could all just be, oh, you know, me and him could be both princesses. Either one. <laughs> it could be. Um, there's no, like, the unlike a lot of the other ledgers, there's actually less specifics on those particular trips. It just has, like, the king's seal on it and nothing else. So, it's super suspicious <laughs> by comparison. Yeah, now I'm wondering if he had his tongue cut out to keep him quiet. Because uh, <laughs> I was or I was suspecting pirates, but now my, my ideas have changed. Uh, one of the other Theodore's... Just double check the notes. Was the advisor. Um, I will ask... It seems the king traveled with you at one stage. Did his advisor travel as well? Uh, he, yeah, he, he nods at that. And then he, uh, makes a, uh, weird gesture. And he, he takes a moment and he, uh, points out, um, like the, the, like he basically, he, he take he says like, or he gestures like, wait a moment. And he goes back into the, the captain's quarters and he comes back out with another book. Um, and, uh, this one is a, uh, 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 it's like a, it's, it's a history of Drabast, basically. It's like a, it's a 
relatively new book, it looks like. Um, and it looks terribly boring. Uh, but he flips to the sort of back of the book. Uh, and he... Uh, or not... He, he flips to the front of the book, shows off, like, that it was written by uh, a... Uh, uh, let me get the name again. Uh, I have forgotten a thing. Uh... Um, it was, uh, the, the, the book was written by, uh, a Feodor Machnow is the, like, full name of it. Uh, and he, like, flips to another page of the book, like, it looks more recent, and it's, it's talking specifically about the king, uh, who is also Feodor Machnow. Um, and then he sort of makes a gesture and, like, like, combines the two of his fingers into sort of like a little circle. Uh, and you roll me insight real fast, just to see if you can sort of understand what he's saying. Uh, yep. Do, 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 inside. <laughs> okay. No. With a 12, uh, un you don't Nim, you get that what he's saying is that the king and his uh, advisor are brothers. That just, because of the weirdness of kings, have the same name. Huh. It's like how all the Hamlets are called Hamlet. Yeah, or how uh, Charlemagne had five kids named Pippin. Wait! If they're brothers and they're the ones, then, uh, I forgot her name. Scoria? No. Scoria's spell will just lit, lit up for both of them and it won't tell us anything. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> I have no other words. <laughs> um, he, uh, the... The captain sort of, like, gestures towards both of you, like, anything else I can help you with? Just sort of, like, shrugging and, like, gesturing towards him and then to you and then back to him. Um, no, I don't think so. We do, and she'll curtsy. We are wobbly, because, you know, drunk. Yeah. Um, she, you know, no, but um, thank you for your time. We definitely do appreciate what you've done here for us. Uh, Thank he, you, sir. You've been really great. He nods. He, you know, lifts up his pint of ale, or, uh, or you know, I guess it's water at this point, or what, or what's left of a pint of ale. Um, and uh, he, he like gives you a friendly wave, uh, and then sort of like a, as you're heading off, he like throws a rock towards the dock to try and get your attention again. <laughs> Uh, actually, you know what? You know what's funnier? Catch he, no, he <laughs> fires a gun into the air <laughs> to get your attention again. Um, That's it, right? And uh, he he gestures, uh, it, like he basically points to you two, and then gestures at the ship, and then says, uh, and then points to, um, let's say the sun. Uh, and it's basically he's saying, like, hey, if you ever feel like it, come and join me again sometime. Come hang out. Yeah. He's just, uh... Yeah. We will! Thank you, sir! Or thank you, Fyodor! He, uh, uh, again, waves you off, and, uh, I think at this point, um, it's, uh, it's around 2 p.m. Everything is getting sort of really hectic, uh, as the, like, celebration kicks into full swing, and the streets start getting, like, there's a, there's actually a parade starting down these main streets. Um... And uh, given the current time, uh, I'm going to kick this into high gear. Uh, Scoria actually finds all four of you and, and basically says, like, hey, we need to get back together real fast. Can um, we tell her that the king and the, the advisor are brothers and that her spell will just go off for both of them, even if one of them is our dad? <laughs> she, upon hearing that, she takes a moment and just goes, shit. Okay, so yeah, we'll that was to, my sentiment. So we'll need to separate them, I guess. Uh, this is gonna be tough. Are all four of I us mean, together when this information comes out? 
Yeah, yes. I'm going to say yeah. Uh, Separating them is not uh, going well, to do no, us the same any good for both of them, Then we only need the advisor. We don't need to get to the king. If the advisor glows, the king will... Sorry, you, you broke up for a lot of that. Fro- uh, yeah, Frost. <laughs> If the if the spell would go off for both of them, then we only need the advisor. If the advisor glows, the king would glow. But then we wouldn't know which is dad. We'd just know one is our uncle. This is true, but the spell wouldn't tell us that anyway. And we need them close for the spell. We would need other ways to distinguish them anyway. And if we have, and if we have the advisor, who's probably easier to get to. Let's be honest. Um. We can get the information out of him, and if we can prove he's not our dad, then we know that the other one is. Exactly. And if the advisor does not glow, then we can strike both of them off our list. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, so upon hearing that, Scurry goes, okay, good. Uh, so the plan can still work. Um, I got us away into the castle. Uh, and she proceeds to, uh, like, she basically she, t- she takes you back to her house, uh, and she pulls out, um, a series of, uh, uh, like, it's, it's, it's basically the help. Um, she, she's got some maid outfits and some butler outfits. Uh. She goes, sorry, this is the best I could do last minute. I tried getting us in as entertainment. She points to you, Nebula. But, um, uh. Uh, apparently someone else is booked. <laughs> Ugh, of course they are. Fine. What were you trying to get us in as? Uh, uh, I... We're the help. We're the help. <laughs> we're we're gonna help clean the castle. No, it's, it sounded like you had another idea? Oh, well, I think it was oh, entertainment, yeah, but someone off. else was booked. Oh, sorry, yeah. We were gonna try entertainment, but that, that didn't work out. And then I also tried just seeing if there was a way to sneak into the castle, but the the... The guards threw me out. So, uh, no, on a related a note, book. I can't be there. <laughs> hmm. so, oh. Uh, I, I'll be on the outside, and I have the scroll. One of you can take it. Take scroll it. takes the scroll. Um, and uh, if the guards ask for me, I don't live here. <laughs> What did you do? Uh, <laughs> the guards asked for you. I'm throwing you under a bus. How well do the guards know each other? Uh, I mean, that you know, they they work together. It it it's going to depend guard to guard. Just pure luck, honestly. <laughs> mm. But again, uh, Scoria is kind of one of the very few Genasi living in Javast, so uh, pr- she kind of stands out. Um, and at this point, the only ones you haven't hit are the beggar, the noble, the hunter, the wizard, and then the king and his advisor. Um, right, and it sounded like we need to do a king and an advisor first, and if they don't work out, then we can do the rest. Yeah. Um, that said, Scoria will tell you that, uh, will say that, okay, so uh, one of the good things about this is that... Um, Obviously, King's hosting a very big party. Um, I do know that uh, the wizard and the noble will both be there. Um, one, because he is uh, the, the he's noble. Of course, he's supposed to attend these high society shindigs. Um, and the wizard apparently just goes wherever he likes. So I guess he's going to be there. As wizards do. Yes, as wizards do. As they, so we could potentially we could potentially knock out all four of them in one go. Yes, potentially, if you can get them close enough to do the score. How close do they all have to be again? Within twenty, 20 feet, feet of you. And um, again, homebrew spell uh, might cause some uh, negative reactions if you try to. Um, you use that in a very public p- place because people aren't going to know what that is. It just takes like what a dab of blood on it. Can't we just like bite our tongue and put it in our pocket? Yes. Yeah, yes. But 
people starting to glow strangely tends to upset the masses. Oh, yeah, that's true. So, um... But I can glow on my own. So, uh, uh, keep that in mind. Here are your outfits, and I need to go. <laughs> oh, uh, bye, Scoria! And, yeah, Scoria, uh, uh, runs out the door. Um, and you can hear, uh, some whistles in the distance. <laughs> Best sibling. Uh, Scoria has uh, uh, the philosophy of do crimes. <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, you now have some disguises you can try to use to get into the castle, if you so desire. Or you can try another way if you don't feel like doing that. <laughs> well, it's what's recommended. We can give it a shot. Uh, one... I believe, uh, at the very least, Nebula, you have proficiency in disguise kit, right? Uh, I have a disguise kit. Oh, you you have a disguise kit. I could have sworn that you had proficiency with that tool. I guess I'm wrong. Nope. You I just bought it because it was the closest thing to a ma- uh, to a makeup kit I could find as a t- in the player's handbook. You are correct, and that that probably is the closest. Would they have a list of invitees, or are they accepting people with invitations? Um, the uh, they have a list of invitees. Mm-hmm. Guys, I've got a plan. I've got seeming, so we can all at least appear human, <laughs> which is going to be a lot less suspicious than a tiefling, a half giant, an Azamar, and a dragonborn, and a dragonborn. <laughs> Sure. Or walk into right. a bar. I know. I, I wanted to make that joke with uh, with the Theodore the Entertainer, but I just didn't find the time. <laughs> um. So yes, you have seeming, which means specifically. Sorry, I I, I gotta double check the specifics on that spell. It's a group disguise. Oh, good. Yeah. I was considering I taking it myself, but passed. Uh, it's one action duration is eight hours. So yes. Um, we all become cows. I don't think the spell lets you do that. It does. I can't change the ca- it's no. I've seen I, I it used that way. There's there's a specific. You can't of, change the target's body type, so you must choose a form that has the same basic arrangement of limbs. Yeah. You're st- you're still going to be very tall as a human, though, uh, uh, Corey, because it's you can make him seem shorter by one foot. <laughs> Is That's the, cool. There's the, that really tall, um, tall yeah, blacksmith. The blacksmith yeah, the blacksmith is yeah, super like, tall, too. Yes, yeah, so yes. Yeah, so maybe they'll just go like, oh, I guess he has two sons. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, I do... So, so obviously, you cast Seeming, uh, and it's... Uh, it's uh, getting late enough in the day that the party is starting. And let me pull up the map with the castle. Uh... I don't even know what I'm rolling. I don't know what all y'all are rolling. <laughs> sometimes you just roll to roll. I'm just I've actually the just ones. been throwing it across my screen, and sometimes it accidentally hits the the chat box. All right. Uh, is this the best? Normally, one? I was rolling deck saves because plus eight is fun. It is plus. It is plus eight funs. Plus uh, eight funs. I have one fifth level spell slot left. Yes. Um, Made your image before, didn't I? Okay. So, uh, this is the map for the uh, castle. And y'all, well, let me get the tokens. Eh. Give me tokens, please. Why Why won't you let me make tokens? I need to shorten the chat, I think. So that I can actually do stuff. Boop. 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 All right. We've got tokens. I don't see anything. Oh, I haven't added them to the map yet. Oh. Uh... All right. Well, that'd be why. Yes. 
Oops, didn't mean to put you on top of me. All right, so the four of you are in your human disguises. Uh, this is the yard you were uh, let in pretty easily based on your uh, your outfit's demeanor and the fact that uh, the, the like one guard standing there is like, we kind of need all the help we can get. <laughs> um, and you arrived early, which was just perfect for him. Um, so yes, uh, the, in front of you sort of, well, give me a moment to, uh, make pointers. This right here is the great hall. The one sort of directly behind, like from the path. Um, over here is the library. Here is the, uh, uh, the king's study. Uh, there's a trophy room over here. If I can grab my pointer. Nope, that's not it. Pointer. Pointer. Study, or trophy room over here. Uh, a parlor for this, this castle. Um, and this is just, real fast, the first floor. Uh, and this is an enormous, like, uh, 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 the, like, this great hall, um, is the, like, uh, shall we say, residence great hall. There is a, like, uh, I'm trying to think of the proper banquet term. hall up top. Yeah, a banquet hall, uh, up top. Uh, but the uh, the castle's kitchen is uh, these. It's this room and the room next to it. It's a. Uh, it's. I can I cannot grab this damn pointer. Uh, these these rooms are the kitchen area. Um, you get the feeling that, like a lot of the sort of area back here is servants' quarters. Uh, just you know, all of the locations to take care of the castle. It's so hard to move things in this. Ah, I need a bigger map. <laughs> but yes, uh, so so there are a wide variety of places to start. What would you like to do first? We're all human, we're all dressed as maids and butlers. Mm-hmm. Logically, we're going to need to get upstairs. Yep. If Nebula had to make a suggestion, we should probably hit the kitchens first, grab some plates, head upstairs, and that way, you know, we have an excuse to be up there mingling with people. Okay. I see you have uh, decided to enter the servants' quarters? Maybe? Oh, I thought that was the kitchen. No, that's the no, ser no, no. servants' quarters. Sorry, the the kitchen is uh, the like, it's it's right next yeah, to no. the like great hall area on the right of it. Oh, uh, so like here? Yeah, it's it's like these three rooms together. Okay. Sorry. You're good. Alrighty. So yes, um, I will say there is a uh uh there is a chef. Or, there's several chefs going to town, but there's a head chef who is sort of, like, examining everybody coming in. Uh, and that that chef uh, gives the four of you pretty stern look. Uh, and then she says, all right, who, who are you lot? Oh, I'll ask to introduce ourselves. We're the, uh, we're the new hires. We're just here to wait and carry, as far as we were told. <sighs> I'm gonna need to talk to... <sighs> they never tell me anything around here. All right, uh, get the hors d'oeuvres. And, uh, don't ruin the plating. Uh, yes, sir. Um, ma'am. So... Yes, ma'am. And I will, uh, pick up one of the plates and head upstairs. <laughs> All right. Cross picks up another one and follows. Same. All right. So all four yep. of you are picking up plates and carrying them upstairs. Indeed. Yep. Alrighty. Looking for the fear doors. Uh, I don't have a specific map, but literally, basically, the uh, the way to think about it is the entire sort of area is like the the ballroom size. Like it, uh, the 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 ballroom is enormous. Um. I don't have a specific. So it's like for. the entire floor, almost the entire floor is that ballroom. Pretty much, it looks like this king loves to party, or at least some king down the line likes to party. 
I'm just imagining like this one area that's like the kitchens and the stairs, like that rectangle is the equivalent of what the ballroom size is. Yeah, kind of. Um, and there's like a, a, you know, there are people already mingling. There are a ton of other servants, uh, or not a, actually not yet. There's not a ton of other servants yet because y'all came kind of early, but it looks like you're going to be very busy if you try to do just the regular servant thing, because people are asking for you left and right. Uh. Um, so let me, let me do a little more description of the ballroom. It's, uh, there is an enormous chandelier, um, that, uh, uh, it's all candles. It's all like stained glass. It looks very expensive. And, um, uh, when you look closer at it, um, you can see that like the, the actual framing is not some sort of metal or, uh, uh, wood or anything of that sort it seems to be made of bone um and uh Uh. the uh uh like far end of the hallway has a far far end of the ballroom sort of like near the uh near where the the king and queen stay um there there's you know there's a uh you know, a, a, a carpeted area that leads or, you know, a single rolled carpet that leads up to uh, a set of steps that has a two thrones sitting on top of it. And behind those thrones is quite possibly the biggest dragon skull any of you have ever seen. Um, and, what type of dragon does it look like? Uh, it looks like uh, I'm going to say a red dragon skull. Um, it's a bit hard to tell just based on no scales or anything uh but it's it's an enormous red dragon skull it is specifically not a silver or a white specifically that's what not frost cares about yes i know it's it's very specifically not your mom <laughs> um you know he's a bastard but i don't think i'd make him that evil <laughs> uh so much for having the cubone ending um but uh walking out of here wearing my mother's skull yeah <laughs> That, that would be uh, very dangerous. And also, the skull is very big. So I don't think you could quite do that. It, Alter self, but anyway. Uh, okay, fair. Fair. Um, uh, and there is, uh, like, it's... There are, like, trophies all over the, like, sides of this ballroom. Uh, representing like far off travels there's uh you can see in one like corner of the room uh there is a sword that is just hilt deep in a stone that has apparently been pulled up by someone um and just sort of left in the corner of this room uh and you can see there's a few people jokingly trying their hand at pulling it out um but no uh no avail for a variety of reasons um and, uh, uh, you know, there are a ton of people you can, uh, uh, you, you actually see a Theodore that matches the, dis- you, you see the noble Theodore among the crowd sort of mingling, uh, it seems to match the description that Scoria gave you all, gave you all. Um, and, uh, you also see sort of sitting like right underneath the dragon skull, just sort of staring up at it, cross-legged on the floor, uh, is a very weird looking young man um with uh, uh like he's wearing these very very extravagant robes um and he's just staring with great intent at this skull but he looks like he's 15 me thinks he be the wizard quite possibly i haven't really named anyone else so that feels like the only yeah. two choices. Uh, the king is not in the room, nor is uh, the advisor, at least as far as you are aware. Um, but yeah, you guys are getting called all over the place uh, for because uh, these people are like, you know, hey, you're the help. We need help. We want food. We want drink. We want. Uh, uh, tell me about this part of the castle. So, uh, uh, yeah, you might need to find a way to get away from the crowd or possibly isolate some of these other Theodores if you were interested in dealing with them. Is it possible to dismiss part of the seeming or is it all or none? 
Oh, it's all or none. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, that sword looks like a challenge. <laughs> I have an idea, but it's a bad one. Good. Tell me what it is. <laughs> uh, hashtag clumsy. <laughs> hmm. well, I'm going to try and pull out the sword in the okay. stone. All right. Um, roll me. What would be the best roll here? Uh, roll me Arcana, then Strength. Hmm. Can I roll Arcana in a, Athletics? No. It, it, uh, just well, Strength? All right. Yeah, it's just pure Strength. I figured pulling could have something to do with Athletics, but all right. Yeah, just sorry. This feels more just pure Strength. Ooh. Oof. Uh, now we're on the Strength. So, um... Yeah, the you can tell from the first one, this is not magic. It's just a sword and a stone. This is just a sword that has been buried into the stone somehow. Um uh the obviously with that strength check, um I'm going to I'm going to give you a uh, uh an out for quarry uh, in that uh, you know, to maintain your disguise, you went a little lighter than you think you probably should have as far as pulling. Yeah. And it just, it was, it was not your best, best work. <laughs> the alternative I could think of is that rather than pulling the sword out, the sword just snaps in half, but <laughs> I think that'd I'm be bad going too light. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, so Frost, uh, Frost uh, wanders over there. Um, obviously, a, a fellow servant um, look, looking at her servant uh, trying to sing. All right, one one thing real fast. Um, I, I I don't think I made it clear. It's not like the typical depictions of the sword in the stone, and that like it's half buried. No, this is to the hilt in the stone. Ah, like so, okay. it, it's not a thing you could have snapped in half. Um, sorry. Well, that makes me wonder if the sword itself, if the stone itself, is the sword. Um, just swinging around no a <laughs> stone on a handle. There is no sword. Someone just glued a hilt to it to mess with people. <laughs> yeah. So sorry, Frost. You, you were saying that you were going to try and meet some servants. Uh. So so Frost is is a uh, look. And wanders over, puts her hand on the stone, and tries to pull off a disguised. Uh. Let's see what was it? Mold Earth to um lo suddenly loosen the uh. A hilt around the stone. Um, make it make it easy to draw. Okay. Uh, is this at the same time as Quarry is doing his thing? No, no. This or? is after. This is just yeah. after Quarry has it has given up. Okay. Um, let me. I gotta double check Mold Earth because I I couldn't. I can't remember if it specifically also does stone or if it's just. It does. Okay, it does. Yeah. Um. I had considered it for getting into the castle, but then we had another way. Um, okay. Um, I'm not seeing... I'm not seeing... Eh, well, I do like doing... Okay, uh, yeah, I, I'm gonna say it does sort of loosen its grip. Um, you can see it, like, you can... You can personally feel as you use this magic that, um the like density of the rock is changing ever so slightly. Um, but, uh, uh, not quite enough for any of the next group of people that are, you know, trying their hand at this, uh, to pull it out. Like it, it actually moves a little bit, which is shocking enough for several of these people, but, uh, not quite pulled out yet. Right. Uh, Fro so Frost then uh, mutters it, to the quarry a bit loud, I've spoken with the rock. It will let you pass, maybe. <laughs> and I guess just for quarry to try again. If you insist. I feel like there's not really much need to try again, but all right. <laughs> so there's strength again? Yeah. And I'm going to say advantage. Uh, advantage. All right. 
Should I just roll again, or yeah, yeah, just go ahead and roll again. Roll again and get better than a two. All right, that's better than a two. Yeah. <laughs> so right. nineteen total. Nineteen. Uh, you pull it about a quarter of the way out. Uh, all right. You still can't get it all the way out because this thing is, it's tough. But you have done more than basically anyone else in this room, and you get the feeling in quite some time. Uh, and as you pull the blade out, you can see that, uh, unsurprisingly, after being buried in stone, it's really dull. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, it doesn't look Fro- too good. <laughs> Frost is after making all, a good a a showing story. of directing people to see Corey uh, doing this thing that nobody else could. Uh... You hear, and with that, I'll get back to doing the wait staff stuff. Um, you hear uh, a few a few cheers, and then you also hear uh, a few people saying, "Oh, that means he's the king now, don't it?" <laughs> uh, to which several other people respond, "Oh, stop with that joke." Um, yeah. But uh, that does attract the attention of the young man in the robes. Uh, He does not approach you, Quarry. He approaches you, Frost. Um, And he doesn't say anything. He just sort of examines you in your entirety. Frost smiles, putting on a pose, uh, pulling out one of the teleportation circle chalks and just twirling it in her hand before pocketing it, but making sure he gets a good look at it. Uh, the uh, uh, <laughs> the wizard. Um, hmm, what would be a good role here? Um, if he's trying to detect intent, she's practically broadcasting. No. To, a, to someone who knows uh, Arcana. No, roll perception. All right, let me make a roll real fast. Uh, as you put the chalk back into your uh, pocket, you actually... Uh, feel for just a moment a mage hand uh, trying to grasp at it. Uh, Frost uh, tightens her grip on it and shakes her head, or shakes her head, um, and then gives him a beckoning gesture and points to some secluded uh, corner of the party. Uh, the. Let me check something real fast. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to remember. I have a wide variety of things I need to remember, and I can't remember all of them. No. Uh, okay. Um. Yeah, he follows you sort of towards that uh, secluded area. Um, And then you uh, uh, see, like, a brief sort of flash. um, And uh, uh, he, like, the, the, you're, you're surround, you, the two of you are surrounded by this dome. And you're not entirely sure what it is. Um, it, it, oh, I have a pretty good idea what this is. Um, <laughs> it feels like uh, uh, just based on uh, you know b- based on what you're you're hearing now. Um, it seems like silence. It seems like a, a a circle of silence has basically surrounded the two of you. Um, yeah, that that's kind of exactly what Frost was counting on. Um, once you once you uh, understand what this is, she turns around and just and just, I apologize that I must appear to you in disguise. Are you Theodore the Wizard? Uh, the image nods. I have 
a challenge that I am attempting to complete, and perhaps you can be of assistance. I know that a man named Theodore, who lives in this town, is my father. I am not sure which. He may be you, he may not. He is more likely um, the advisor or the king. Um, I was wondering if I could have your assistant, if you might be willing to assist me in identifying which Theodore this is. Um, the, uh, the, the young man, um, sort of strokes his chin and then just points to where you have the scroll concealed. Yes, that would, that is uh, my backup identifier for, it, it, it causes myself and whoever's related to me nearby to glow. I do not have infinite uses of it. Uh, the figure sort of shakes his head like, I don't care. I want to see it. Uh, it Frost uh, pulls it out and holds it open for him to inspect. Not giving to him, but just so he can read it. Um, yes. Uh, he, he actually does examine it quite thoroughly. He looks vastly more interested in it than he does in anything you've just said. Um... And, uh, uh, he nods, uh, and you see, it's, you see instantaneously, uh, there's another, like, he has a scroll in his hands, and he appears to be writing down the exact same sort of inscriptions and runes that are on it, on the scroll that you are holding. Frost nods, just, yes! And if you wish this as payment for helping me, I would I happily make this trade. I may have other spells that you can write down as well. I'm not sure which of them would be of use to you. Um the uh uh I can even tell you where to get the ingredients for this spell, if uh, you don't already know. The the wizard sort of like gives you a look of I'm pretty sure I know how this works. <laughs> Um, and, uh, basically as you, so, as, as he sort of finishes the scroll, he like releases the paper and it just rolls up on itself and disappears. Uh, and at the same time, the like circle of silence around you does the same. Uh, Ross very quickly stashes her copy of the scroll. Uh, and the wizard, uh, simply the wizard again sort of strokes his chin um and then uh holds up four fingers but he's not saying anything frost nods uh and he as, as he does that he like lowers one finger points at you lifts another one points at uh nim Lifts another one, points at uh, Nebula. Lifts the last one and points at Kiori, acro like, across the room. Frost nods again. There is a fifth, not in this castle. Um, the wizard nods at this. Uh, and then he turns again and points to the stone, and then back to you. Guilty as charged. I was creating a diversion. I was also attracting your attention. The, uh, the wizard nods. Uh, and then you actually, uh, uh, for the first time, hear a voice. Uh, roll perception? Uh, the voice is coming from behind you. Uh, and the wizard taps your shoulder uh, as his silent image fades away. Frost turns around to face uh, him. And he goes, Look, I'm always very busy, but I'm awfully curious to have to see what exactly is going to go on here. So what sort of distraction do you want? <sighs> Ideally, um, we would want to have yourself, the noble, and the advisor and or the king close enough that I can use the scroll once 
discreetly to see if which of you, if any, is our father. The the All wizard. Four of us. The the wizard sort of shakes off that notion and goes, "I can be. I'll be perfectly blunt. Uh, impossible for me. And as for and he points out the noble that he knows you're referring to at this point. Um, he goes, also impossible. Uh, and he sort of leans in and just goes, impotency. Um, Frost, no- Frost nods, trying not to break his smirk. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, terrible that accident that got him in a, uh, I guess it was just birth. <laughs> terrible him, I suppose. Doesn't matter. Uh, is there anyone else you might, you're interested in that you need to check for this little task you're doing? So the remaining ones we have, we, we have not yet eliminated from possibility are the king, mm-hmm. the advisor, a hunter, a, and a beggar, all named Fyodor. Well, uh, I can't help you with either of those other two, but knowing the king's appetite, I'm sure he's your most likely candidate. Um, very well. The king will be here in 23 minutes. Um, at least according to the future. Um, the wizard looks really kind of like, the, the wizard looks like he's sort of spaced out for most of this conversation. Uh, like he's right. having several conversations at once. Which is why Frost is waiting until he is done speaking to uh, provide further information. So, she knows how this works. Yes. Um, so let me think. I can... I refuse to perform tricks. I can do something to get the king localized for you. The scroll would work or would not tell us which of the advisor or the king we hear that they are brothers. If so, it would equally work on either of them if either of them are our, our father. Well, the right hand of the king is a very private person. He has already made his arrangements not to attend. He has already retired for tonight? Yes. He is Mm. quite done for the day. And... Trying to get you into his quarters would be very bad for me personally, and probably, definitely, yes, all four of you would be killed. Yes. If the king is easier, then the king is easier. He is, at the very least, distractible. Is that all? Ah, uh, that would be very helpful. Thank you, sir. I have one more request to make, if that's perfectly all right. And what is your request? I have not had a chance to thoroughly study the Genasi. Could you perhaps leave your sister here? I will tell my my sister that you wish an appointment with her and that she, when coming here, should say as much that you have requested her presence. If that may get her inside. That should work. I shall tell her that when next I see her. Thank you. You're Uh, quite welcome, sir. And yeah, the wizard sort of uh, walks off after that. Um, he starts mumbling to himself again. It seems like he's having several conversations at the same time. 
Um, yeah. So what are the rest of you doing? Trying to keep up with everyone telling me to do things. There's a lot of people telling you to do things. Yes, it's it's a lot. <laughs> but I'm surprisingly um, holding a lot of things. I mean, monk, monk yeah, skills exactly. very good. To the point where it's probably really entertaining for people to see, and they probably keep putting stuff on. It's like, please stop. Probably. Quarry, you're getting uh, a lot of questions from the nobles and uh, the wealthy who are like, so how do you get... Kind of get out of it there. A lot of what? <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, you're getting a lot of questions from the nobles and the wealthy who are like, oh, you're really strong for a, a, a servant. How, like, no one has been able to do that in centuries. How on earth did you manage it? Et cetera, et cetera. It was loosened. Uh, that doesn't appear to be a good enough answer for them. <laughs> I am also rather strong. Uh, a few of the nobles are starting to ask, uh, if you would potentially be interested in working for them. I must politely decline. All right. Uh... Nebula, you doing anything in particular? Uh, I'm probably just going to keep uh, keeping up the act. Uh, um, not drinking. <laughs> I'm on the job. I can't. Oh, no. What a, I what I'll keep an eye. I'm, I'm probably like doing circuits, chatting, you know, chatting as I go and keeping an eye out for the you know, anyone like the king, I guess. Mm hmm. Is, we'd probably have a description of what he looks like, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's going to be the fanciest yeah. man in the room. He's the guy wearing yeah. a crown. Uh, yeah, I'd be walking around, like, you know, delivering drinks, being like, oh, you know, like, you know, trying to get gossip out of people, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so, the... Uh, uh, <laughs> the... A after 20-ish minutes pass, um... The trumpets start blaring and a whole big procession starts as uh, the uh, king and queen and uh, four children plus baby uh, descend down the stairs to uh, uh, applause from the nobles. Uh, the king is a uh, tall, broad-shouldered man, like six foot tall, thick black beard and thick dark hair. Uh, he's definitely an older man, um, but he looks, uh, as hale and hearty as any adventurer, half his age. Um, and, uh, the, the queen looks very tired <laughs> and perhaps a little magically out of it. Um, and she is carrying the, uh, the, the newborn and the four children who are all fairly young are, uh, following behind and uh yeah the, the the king sort of makes his uh makes a uh makes his entrance goes to the throne sits down uh and uh queen sits down the children sort of sit on the steps and uh as the music sort of dies down the king stands back up and uh places his hand on his wife's shoulder and goes today is a wonderful day today we celebrate my fifth child, Bartimaeus. May he live long and do as well for this kingdom as I have. Uh, and then he sort of waves an arm out to the crowd and goes, And now, my friends, my subjects, please, eat, drink, and be merry. Frost takes the advantage of his coming down and everyone being distracted to sidle up to the uh, others of the party and dis distribute the info the wizard gave her. All right. Yep, that, that info passes along pretty quick. There's uh, Once the you know king is making his thing, pretty much nobody's trying to move because that would be very rude. <laughs> um, but nobody notices you either. Um... So, yes, what is the next step? Uh, if we use this spell, everything's going to light up. Either everything lights up or nothing does. Yep. 
what happens if we're wrong and it's not him and we need then to kind of leave? Rude. <laughs> and there are only two others, and we have two more charges of the spell after. Yeah. Uh, you were unclear if the ship captain was or was not. Right. Yeah. But he was nice. I don't think he was. Like, I liked him, yeah. but yeah, I don't think he was. We could probably get him together with one of the others. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's what happens if it doesn't shine. If it does, we need to plan. If it does, then I've completed my task and shall leave. Aww. I don't think we'll be able to leave. It will take some doing to be able to leave. I assure you, I shall leave. <laughs> um, and as you are having this conversation, all four of you roll perception for me. <laughs> right. Gotta love having conversations in the middle of people. <laughs> yeah. Bye, no one will notice. Eh, it wasn't too great. Um... Okay, uh, Nebula and uh, Quarry, um, you don't notice anything kind of out of the ordinary. Uh, you know, there's people sort of talking and, you know, it's it's gone back to sort of party mode. Um, Nim and Frost, uh, you notice something weird. Uh, the, the dragon skull has scales on it now? Um... Uh, and even Guys, as you watch, have... more scales are growing back onto it. What color are the scales? Bright red. Uh, do skulls regrow scales, guys? No, they don't. Uh, the skull's doing that. Uh, and as this is happening, uh, a, an enormous roar rocks the entire ballroom uh, as the skull collapses behind the throne. Uh, and then it begins to rise. And as it does so, uh, you can see along with scales, there is meat and tendon sort of wrapping around it. And the eye sockets uh, first gain this Un, this eerie yellow glow and then you see these enormous reptilian pupils form in the middle of these eye sockets until finally there is again full eyes behind this monster and the neck grows out from this skull and claws start dragging themselves across the steps and a uh. dragon is completely forming before your eyes uh, um, naturally. Frost forgets for a moment that she is at all disguised and steps in front of the dragon between the dragon and everybody else, including the king. Are there any shields nearby? Uh, your I think your shield is still on you. It's just disguised. Ah, cool. It's it's disguised as a serving tray. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and uh. uh it's like I said, this, this enormous, this is, this is an elder worm kind of dragon. Um, this thing looks ancient. Uh, and the people are naturally freaking out. Um, the queen is just sort of sitting there in her sort of adult state. The children are, uh, running to, uh, uh, to their dad who, um, looks up at the dragon and just laughs at it. <laughs> uh, and yes, you said, Frost, you said you were trying to stand sort of in between it and the, the king. Right. Um, the king sort of like uh, approaches you and places a hand on your shoulder and goes, please, there's no need to risk yourself for such a tiny thing. Um, so seeming doesn't alter, uh, seeming can be uh, dispelled or messed with by physical inspection, right? Like, let's say, putting a hand on shoulder? If, if enough yep. has changed, yep. 
ha, 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 ha. Right. Does the king look like he just noticed? Uh, let's find out. Nope. So <laughs> He's a bit distracted. <laughs> Unfortunately, that does break the rest of you. And you're, fortunately, you're all behind, and people are like, "Oh, dragon! I should leave." Um, so if we have a minute, mm -hmm. I'd like to uh, like, do we have a full minute before the dragon does something? Oh yeah. All right. I'd like to see if its armor class is greater than, equal to, or less than mine. Less than. All right. Uh, if we have two minutes, I'd like to check its HP, too. Uh, I don't think you have two minutes, but with one okay. minute, you, you have uh, an understanding. Um, and uh, uh, almost like, but like in that like one minute as this dragon continues to form and like spread itself across this hall, the king goes back to the sword in the stone, looks at it and goes... Huh, someone ruined it. Pushes the sword back into the stone and then lifts the entire rock. I knew it. <laughs> uh, before turning back around and facing the dragon head on. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, it's just you all and the queen and the children and the dragon who, uh, the, and the, the children are cheering for their dad who is clearly about to do something very cool. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so Frost holds her hands out wide, not disguising at all that she's now casting Wall of Stone to imprison this dragon and hold it in place for the king to smash. Uh, all right. Um, I feel like this would be a good time to use the scroll. No. Fro uh, Frost, Frost has a plan, and also the, the scroll is on Frost's person. Mm. Is it? Because I kind of yeah. asked for it before you did. <laughs> well, he it has to have been because he gave it to he showed it to the wizard. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I mean that's that said. If one of you wants to take it from Frost, um, Frost is not exactly paying that much attention to it right now. Or moving. So yeah, you guys can someone can try to swing by real fast and get it before anyone else notices. She could, but uh, priorities are now a dragon. I have a feeling the dragon is the wizard's doing. I don't know that. Um, Frost personally thinks that this is basically an illusion or a conjuration, some distraction meant to empty the hall except for the royal family and us. And it's did that yeah. job. It's definitely doing that. Um, with a 14 and the information you got when Frost sort of let left, you know, told everyone about it. Yeah, you get the feeling this is the wizard's illusion. Mm. Mean illusion. Yeah. The, I won't lie. The wizard's kind of a dick. <laughs> wizards to no, are sometimes that. Really? Yeah. I never would have guessed. Yes. Who, who would have guessed? Anyway, do you need a rule to, like, trap the dragon or anything? Or just wall of stone just pins it in place for the king? That's wall of stone. And, you know, this is, this is perfectly in place for the king. Uh... And the king, uh, if, if, uh, do, do Cory, Nebula, did you have anything you wanted to do? Nim, do you have anything you want to do before the king takes action? Uh, just on the off chance that this isn't, and I know it probably is, and I know Nebula knows that it probably is, but on the off chance it's not, um, how close are the children together? Uh, they're very close. Uh, they're like right underneath the dragon. Oh, yeah, we're, we're taking the children, we're moving. <laughs> just in general. Um, yeah, I was just going to cast Resilient Sphere to, like, enclose on them. Sounds good. So it, it, uh, yeah, it's weird, because it says the creature is enclosed for the duration, but I assume if they're children, can I get both of them? Because they can get an object, a creature or object of, of large, large, smize, uh, large size or smaller within range. I'm going to say uh, you you can... I'm going to say you're good enough at this particular spell you can get all four in one. Sweet. 
<laughs> if you just stack them up, they're a large, they're a large size creature, right? I Fine. mean, it's it's well, I mean, it's you know, three children, three children in a trench coat is a normal sized man, so four has got to be a large. Exactly. <laughs> and they're all very small children. Like again, there's like a year and a half difference between all of them, so the oldest is maybe six. Or the oldest would be seven, I guess. Yeah, I'm definitely going to encase them in a indestructible sphere just in case something goes horribly, horribly wrong. Mm-hmm. Seems reasonable. Yep, I'll be prepared for combat, but I won't take action yet. All right, Nim, anything you wanted to do? Uh, combat. <laughs> <laughs> just prepare for combat. It's the it's the dragon. They're they're people. Yeah, it might be real. It probably is not real, but it's excessive. Uh, all right. The uh, the the king takes a, a a running leap towards this dragon and brings the stone down upon its skull. Uh, and there is an enormous sort of crack like thunder across this uh across the space um and you see uh the like the dragon's head goes down uh and the you actually see like fragments of the skull that made it uh lower like you know fall to the ground sort of at dusty (laughs) based on just that smack uh and then it raises back up And uh, it opens its mouth, and you can see fire is beginning to brew in the back of its throat. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Anyone else want to contribute real fast before fire happens? Nim, uh, I can protect myself from taking damage, but I don't know if I can protect anyone else. Is gunpowder known in this universe? I yes, because I literally had the captain fire a gun earlier. Okay. Um Frost uses creation to make a whole bunch of gunpowder, tossing it down the the, the uh, dragon's throat into the into the dragon's fire. Okay. Um Nim was holding an action as well. Did you wanna do something? Uh, I'm going up to Frost taking the thing and biting my finger and putting blood on the spell scroll. Okay. Um, this okay. So here, here's the series of events. Um, the uh, uh, Corey gets down to protect himself. The the children sort of huddle underneath the shield. Um, the uh, the king sort of looks up and like, oh, that didn't work as well as I'd hoped. Um, Frost, you create the gunpowder, and as you throw it. Um, it does catch this mystical fire that is, like, holding in the middle of this maybe illusory dragon, um, and it does explode in this bright, brilliant flash of light, uh, and as that happens, Nim, the spell scroll that you are holding activates, uh, and you can see that, uh, like, just... On the, I'm assuming you move close enough that, you know, you're within 20 feet, correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, well, the, Frost had themselves, like, in front of the king or whatever, or well, at least yeah, the Frost king. Is, yeah. Frost is near the it king. It goes so off for the kids, then it's an obvious. Yes. Um, so what happens is, uh, I, I do want one last thing. Um, perception roll, all four of you. All right. Darn it. Okay. Uh, Nim, unfortunately, you are kind of blinded by this flash. Nebula, you are also kind of blinded by the, like, flash of the gunpowder. Um, Quarry, Frost, uh, you see that, again, all four of you are glowing, as is the king, and none of his kids are glowing. Hmm. Ouch. <laughs> Oh, this is a kind of what Frost suspected. Um, so yeah, uh, you know the king is related. Uh, 
And you know the kids are not. And you know the kids are not. Um, and they're also not related to the king or his brother. Yeah. Oof. So, uh, mm. I suppose it's a good thing that nobody else was around. <laughs> mm. Um, so yes, uh, you do have information. You are either related to this king or perhaps to his brother. Um, and let me do another quick roll. Another two, actually I should do three. Okay. Uh, none of the, the, neither the king, the children, nor the queen notice, uh, the glowing because they are still a bit blinded by the dragon that is now no longer there. But the <laughs> fragment of the skull, it, like the skull fragments are just littered across the uh, the steps of this uh, uh, throne, like the, the ballroom. All right. Frost huffs a bit and then drops to a knee facing, uh, facing the king, just, your highness. Uh, the king turns around. I like still rubbing his eyes at everything, sets the sword down, uh, and goes, uh, yes. Uh, my, our apologies. We heard there was going to be an in and there was no time to alert your security. We are wandering adventurers who sometimes hear of these, as these problems and wish to, uh, you have been a good king to these lands. We wish to, that to continue. Thanks. See? Uh, thank you. Frost, look, Frost looks to the nebula. Drop the disguise, please. The disguise is already dropped at this point. Oh, the seeming? Yeah. Okay. Because, again, he, yeah, I'd, it, I'd it have broke it. when he grabbed your shoulder. Oh, okay. Yes. We had a further quest. Um, one that it may be best to discuss with you in private. Um, if we could ask for a boon of your time, just your time. The the king sort of looks around the room and goes, well, how much more private could you get? No one else is here but me and my family now. Uh, Frost looks around. If I may give you a whisper, sir, I, I can I can explain everything. Very this well. is for your ears only. The, the king sort of sighs and then steps down towards you to uh, take the whisper. <laughs> Frost, whisper, Frost whispers, we are also your true daughters. We have evidence. Uh, we, I am not certain you would wish to discuss this in front of your the queen and your, your adopted children. The king takes a look at you and goes, I'm... You must have hit your head during that encounter. Uh, the, the king looks back to his children and back to you and goes, those are my children. And yeah, you... no, no, they're not. We have proof and we can prove it right now if you want. <laughs> what? But either your, your, either your advisor or you are our dad and we need to sort that one out. Aren't we kind of still glowing? Uh, yeah, you're, you're going for at least a few seconds more as this right. conversation is happening. Right, and just consider who, those who glow at this second are related by blood. Uh, those who do not glow are not. To us, anyway. The king looks towards you, looks back to the, looks back to his, his wife and children, and looks back to you and goes, well, I need to roll one thing real fast for him. Ooh. Uh, he looks at you and goes, You say that, but was it not just an illusion that we fought now? And I am more than familiar with the kind of illusionary magic that lets someone choose a light source. Ask your wizard. We showed him this spell earlier. He can explain what we saw, what we showed him. <laughs> the, the king gives you another look and goes, you really must not be from this place. That is not my wizard. He is simply a wizard. 
I, and he, Regardless, and he actually he, leans in and he goes, I find it best not to annoy wizards, personally. Frost smiles widely at this and looks him in the eyes. Yes, it isn't. She's trying to give him a man, a slightly manic look. Uh, the king <laughs> sees that look and goes, Very well. I will, at the very least, speak to my brother about this. He is more familiar with magic than I am. Uh, and... Look, look there's, a, there's an easy way of doing this. Um, and I'm just going to list off a bunch of, like, dates and places and be like, were you anywhere of those places at any of those times? Uh, the, the king says... E Yes, I was, and so was my brother. That is one of the reasons I would like to go speak with him. Well, uh, Very I mean, well. We, do, we, we are not certain... It... Bang at Celestial at one point. <laughs> Frost uh, holds the hand up and just, Very well. The evidence does not say whether it is you or your brother, and at least half of us only wish information. And we will gladly hold our silence. And she looks at the others. We will hold our silence, right? I cannot for kingship. Eh. I'm pretty much already a princess. I may as well just make it official. <laughs> I just wanted to know. Uh, and the, the king says, all right, a few moments, please. And he heads back up the stairs and you see him go off towards another room. Uh, you know, further beyond the staircase. Uh, Frost has an internal count, uh, internal timer at the back of her head and dismisses the wall of stone just before it would have become permanent so it doesn't mess up the throne room. <laughs> Probably a good idea. Um, although, based on the way the king was swinging that rock, probably not too much of an issue for him either. <laughs> just, to, hey, it cleans up some the rubble that was a wall of stone anyway. True, true. Um, the king, uh, you hear some of the most vigorous swearing you have ever heard in your life, uh, coming from upstairs. Uh, and- Can I sneak upstairs? Yes, you absolutely can. I would like to sneak upstairs. Go for it. Okay. Yeah, you, you get upstairs and you see the king is, uh, like, opening doors like freaking crazy. Um, and he, uh, like, he, he is swearing up a storm. He is kicking down these doors. He is, uh, like, frantically searching. Um, and you can see he is holding something in his hand. It's some sort of parchment, you guess? Um, and you can see that, like, these, the, the rooms that he's kicking open look like they should have more stuff in it than they do. It was the heist. Uh. Ha. Huh. Do you want to get closer to the king? Absolutely. All right. Roll another stealth check. Okay, um, you get quite close to him, uh, and then you feel, uh, a very, very cold dagger, uh, tip first at the edge of your throat, like, held in the king's hand as he looks at you, uh, and then he lowers it, uh, and... He looks like he's shaking with rage at this moment. Um, and he hands you the, like, parchment that he is holding. Uh, and sort of holds his head in his hands and go, I suppose you should read that to your siblings. I have a brother to murder. Um, and the king, uh... 
the king heads off. Uh, he actually heads back down the stairs towards the um, towards the ballroom, picks up the sword without speaking to any of the rest of you, and leaves. Yeah, I'm gonna follow him because okay, bye, that sir. seems fun. <laughs> What's the note say? Um, the note says, uh, "Dearest brother." I am so very sorry that you had to deal with this. Uh, it was an unfortunate boon for me. You see, I happen to be, uh, shall we say, very interested in some items that you have held for a very very long time. You remember our adventuring days, don't you? Well, I happen to know someone who is incredibly keen on getting his hands on those, and in exchange he offered me something that I have deeply desired for a very, very long time. Uh, a fresh start. You understand, don't you, brother? I simply had too many people who were interested in me at this point, too many people who were uh, keen on locating me and perhaps, I don't know, teaching me a lesson, whatever it is that justice stuff you used to say. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, if you have need of me, I will be anywhere but here. Enjoy your... Well, I suppose they aren't your children, are they? Your brother. <laughs> and that, like, it, it's, it seems, you know, it's written in a way that is very clearly, like, it's implied that this brother knew about you guys coming to track him down. Uh, but uh, it was more of just a, a very nice coincidence that uh, all of this came together. So, uh... Yeah. Um, so with that, I suppose they're not your children, are they? Was that referring to us or to the, uh, the, the queen's children? children? It was referring to the queen's children. Okay. Um, Guys, dad's and... an asshole. Let's go beat him up. Right. One moment. Frost looks to the, to the queen. Um, can you handle things here while we assist the, uh, your husband in meeting out justice? Absolutely, giant talking lizard. The queen looks very out, out of it. <laughs> right. Frost take, take, the, take the regal bell. Very well, your majesty. We shall attempt to secure the safety and the justice of your husband. And with that, Frost is downstairs heading after the king. Uh, the... Uh, Nebula Nims out the window and sprouts her wings and goes flying off. <laughs> Bye. Uh, so Nebula, you were, you were after the king first. Correct? Oh yeah. All right. Um, so assuming the advisor is actually our father, I have yet to actually find him. So you, you are, I shall continue on. You shall continue your quest. Um, and, uh, yes. So, um, the, the king, basically as you approach the king, uh, the stone whirls around I need you to dodge. Dex uh, save. Dex save. Dex save. Just straight Dex? Dex save. Yeah. Okay, how do I do a Dex save? Well, it was it was Nebula first. It was, it was just Nebula because she was the one like immediately on the mm. trail. All right. Um, yeah. With a 12? Um... You kind of get clocked. Um, God damn it. Your your head is hurting. Like you know, this this is we're end game here. So uh, your head hurts, um, but you you didn't get too badly injured. Um, and uh, yeah, the the king takes a moment, extends a hand to uh, lift you back up from the ground. Um and uh, apologizes for 
hitting you. Um, uh, it's okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, this a terrible is... headache, huh? <sighs> I, I trusted my brother for quite a long time, and... Well, this is how he repaid me. I... <sighs> I can't do this. I cannot do this. Um, he looks back of up to the castle. can. It'll be fun. He looks back up to the castle and looks back to you all. Um, and uh, as the rest of you sort of approach. I'm assuming, uh, Nim, you're like landing near him wings for three-point sure. style. Yeah. Um, it's fun. The, the king uh, gives you all a look and goes, I, if I were a younger man, I would be more than capable of going on this quest, but I have a kingdom to run now, and even if they are not mine, I need to take care of those children. I, he looks at the four of you and goes, I am not your father. I was not the one to uh, seek that path on my adventure. Um, but if you if you can find and bring my brother to justice, you are. I will grant you as much as this kingdom can offer. Wait, I'm in. Frost gives him a smile. You're not our father. You're our uncle. You're our favorite uncle. We will gladly. Nim, Corey? Try. I seek not riches, only to further challenge myself and become greater than I am. Very well. Then, if there is anything we can do to assist you before you set out... Let me know. Uh, ah. I think we're fine. And If we are to set off immediately, I think I know where he goes, and I had one further obligation if you could dispatch a messenger. The fire genasi, and uh, Frost describes her. Um, the wizard that we talked about, wish an audience with her. Can you make sure that she gets the message that the wizard wishes to see her? Um, he nods and says... Uh, Yes, I I suppose I can do that. Thank you. Uh, just all four of you promise me that you will find and kill that bastard. We will Very find well. him. His fate may be worse than death. Good. And with that, I think we are finished with uh this one-shot children of man. Uh which we could yeah. potentially come back to at some point in the future as Bastard Quest. <laughs> uh, everyone have fun? Yep. yep. All right. Sorry. Yeah, no, it was good. Uh, sorry to end with sort of a cliffhangery situation. It just felt the most uh, uh, appropriately I mean, dramatic. That's quite all right. So uh, we never did meet the hunter or the beggar. You never did, no. Actually, we didn't meet the advisor either, but... No, technically eh. speaking, no, you didn't. Um, With our luck, the um, hunter and the beggar are the advisor's cronies. Potentially. Nah, the merchant. Merchant Well, merchant is, definitely is, but the yeah. hunter and the beggar, too. Yeah. And he's getting away on the sailor's boat, I can almost guarantee you. <laughs> I am curious as to who those children's father are. Uh, it is the... Uh, the so the, the minor noble that um, the wizard was saying impotence, the mm. wizard was lying. I see. <laughs> oh. So. <laughs> yeah, no, that situation just went from funny to creepy real quick. Yeah. Now that I put all the, piece, now that I put all the pieces together, that's really disturbing. Good work, Din. <laughs> You're welcome, I suppose. You feel uh, bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
so yeah the <laughs> i i am glad that uh it's yeah theodore is a bit like john in this world <laughs> Um, I'm surprised nobody cut on that, uh, the city was, uh, Drabast, aka an anagram of bastard. Oh! <laughs> not yeah, even I don't a- pay attention to, I, I don't pay attention to, um, anagrams because they are so often just incorrect. It's true. Yeah, I thought that, I, I heard a J in there, uh, whenever you said it. Drabast. It's, to be fair, D and J yeah. kind of sound similar. Um... <laughs> Yeah, and I never wrote it down, and I used Waterdeep, so you know it happens. All right, um, yep. I guess uh, thank you everyone for joining us. Hopefully, this will end up on a Spud stream, uh, Spud YouTube channel, maybe. I don't know. Um, hopefully, he can do better with this than I could. <laughs> um, and uh, next week, I believe on the uh, 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 Spud Ventures is uh, the part three of. Um, murder in space is that correct swing cat i thought that was going to be the written ones next week and then murder and jump chase was two weeks from now no it's uncertain it it's uncertain i i was under the assumption that we were doing this uh still bi-weekly which is why i decided to do something different today since spud couldn't be here okay then yes we need to clarify with spud which one is going to be next week and make sure everybody in the respective games knows all right then we can do that in the future anyway friends uh thank you all for joining us hope you found this as fun as i did to play uh hope you found it as fun to listen to and um have a wonderful night